Hey everyone, it's good old buddy Tony Schiavone. You know, we've had so much fun bringing you what happened when each and every week, and this could not be done without your love, your support, your love of wrestling, and your constant feedback. It means the world to me, to my buddy Conrad Thompson, to Lois, and the entire staff at WHW. Heck, it means everything to the family. And I want to let you know that we are here for you in so many ways that you don't even realize. And that's why we've come up with SaveCade.com. The very best way for you to save on your mortgage, reduce your monthly payments, get out of debt faster, and even put money back in your pocket. It's simple and easy. Just go to our website at SaveCade.com, fill out the form. There's no obligation, and you may not even need an appraisal. Start saving immediately with SaveCade.com and the great people at First Family Mortgage. Lower your monthly payments. Possibly skip your next two house payments. Thanks again from all of us at WHW. Today, right today, log on to SaveCade.com and put your butt in a seat that will help save you money. MNLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lender. Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When Monday on the MLW Radio Network. Actually, if you're listening to this on Monday, you're on Patron, as Larry Thompson would say. What's going on, Tony Schiavone? How are you? Hey, Conrad, I'm doing great. Hope you had a great weekend. I know you were up in the great state of New York in the weekend with your buddy Bruce, uh, but everything's great here in the South, as you know, and uh, hopefully you've had a great summer. Hey, thanks to everybody who's been on Patron with us. We're having a great time. Man, we are, uh, let's just tell it like it is. We're fucked up on Patron. We're having so much fun on Patron. And one of the things that everybody was talking about last week was we introduced a whole new generation, I believe, to Stroking from uh, Clarence <laughs> Carter. Or, hang on, let me say that again. Clarence Carter, Clarence Carter, Clarence Carter. Oh, shit. Oh, wait a minute. Who's that in the background? <laughs> Our six man uh, is now, wait a minute. With Lois, that makes us an eight man or three and a half man, two and a half man. Carry the one, subtract the one. <laughs> okay, I well, uh, math wasn't that good, but who is that cackling in the background? It's Cassio <laughs> Kid. Yeah, what's up, fools? <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> that said, that that kind of flowed out of your mouth too easily, like we really are fools or something. Yeah, it felt good. It felt good. I'm gonna be honest with you. It felt good. Yeah. Well, and you see, here's the deal. I figured, why not just go ahead and, well, first of all, piss off half of our listeners who don't like Casio. And and secondly, give everybody a taste of what they're going to be getting at StarCast, because we're going to be doing Botchamania. Uh, Matthew from Botchamania is going to make us a brand new uh, clip, a, a new video, a new cut. And we're going to watch that after Ron Funches and Casio Kid make us laugh with a little stand up. And I figure, hey, this is a way for us to uh, get a test run here together with a, a one 
of the more controversial shows, to say the least, Bash at the <laughs> Beach 2000. This is normally where we have uh, our other partner here, I guess we would say. Mm-hmm. Lois, give us a countdown. Is Lois around? Does she want to do one for us? Yes, we'll, we'll let her do it. Okay, what do you want? Just three, two, one. Three, two, one. You said just three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one, play. <gasps> oh, that, that'll that cost you extra. <laughs> three, two, one, play. Wait a second. That's ice train getting out of the car. Where's Kimberly? When oh, you need her. my. Listen to you. What's okay, I'm just, uh, just trying to start. Somebody hey, man, call that's... my mama. <laughs> He's a commissioner of WCW. And I got to tell you something, Ice Train. Uh, I mean, uh, whatever your name is, I don't want any of those little, little, little uh, Asian guys flip flopping around my ass because I'm a legit superstar. And did, did somebody hear some music? Is there some music coming around somewhere? I, it sounds like a Jimmy Hart song, or it's maybe one of those shitty songs that Casio would play in the mornings. Hiya, <laughs> ho, ho, Conte Ninja. Get the fuck out of here, you three little son bitches. Oh, sushi. I get the. I said, get out of here. What the fuck? They're beating his ass up. And those. And those are some of the worst working punches I've ever seen in my life. Holy shit! Well, kick a guy in the nuts. That always works. That's what I say. And what a great way to start bash to the beach, huh? We were often. We were often tumbling on this, weren't we? Holy tum- shit. T- tumbling is right. <laughs> I'm telling is, you uh, right now, if, if I were if I were a fan, I would have said, I want my money back now. Bef- yep. Before we even started. God mighty. <sighs> well, we do have eleven matches to cover here, Conrad. Well, and this is, uh, eleven. This is one of the more craptastic shows of the entire run. It's Bash at the Beach, presented by Master Lock. We wish we could lock this out of your memory banks, but we can't because you signed <laughs> up for this shit. It's what happened when on Patron. Look at the budget you have for Pyro here. You spent yeah. more money on Pyro in this clip right here than WWE will for this entire year. Well, of course we will. Well, not only that, I mean, uh, uh, also think about how much the budget was to go out and shoot, as you're going to see a little bit later on. A graveyard match. And I guess we had to buy a wedding cake for the show. And we also had to buy a casket for the show. Uh, So, yeah, the budget was terrible. And uh, some funny things happened here that really got David Crockett pissed off. And we'll uh, talk about those when we go along here because I thought it was I thought it was funny. Uh, And, of course, we had uh, three fat guys with uh, Hawaiian shirts on as your host as well. So that always brings them in. (laughs) Jesus, what was, what is it? Ooh, who is, is it this? bad that I'm trained to look for a Lois Rules sign in the crowd, even though it's 2000? I feel like I'm <laughs> yeah. going to see one. Yeah, you've already seen one? No, I feel like I'm going to see one. Uh, no, you're not going to see one. I'll tell you what you are going to see, and this oh. is the truth. I noticed, there's, there's our buddy. The Move juice. It, hey, how about this? What the fuck is Disco Inferno doing with this group? Well, here's what he's doing. He's doing the same thing back then that he's doing now. He's glomming off Conan. He knows Conan's cool. Right. I'm just keeping it 100 with you. Uh, he knows Conan's cool. So he's like, oh, I'm just going to ride this gravy train. But yeah. how about what's going on here? You got Dave Pinzer, who's going to yeah. be a star cast. Charles Robinson, who wishes he could be a star cast. Conan, who's going to be a star cast. Disco, who's going to be a star cast. And Rey Mysterio, rumor and innuendo, is going to be an all in, which, uh, is right next to Starcast. So how about that? I feel like this is Starcast 2000 in the ring hmm. right now. We should have Tigerus there too. I would think. I would hope. But but look at this. This is this is one of the reasons you, you start out your show and you say, you know, we are that's enough. You start out your show and you say, <laughs> listen, let's have something hot at the beginning. So let's have the Disco Inferno come in and talk. That ain't hot at the beginning. That that's not it, man. That's not it at all, well, but he was on the booking committee, right? So he's putting himself in these spots. Exactly. By the way, how jacked is Conan right here? Jacked. Yeah. Conan's jacked right here. That's okay. A, that's a swole motherfucker. He's a big okay. dude. He has lots of musculature. Okay. So I didn't uh, know how you were using the term jacked. No, not Klondike bill. Calm down. <laughs> Speaking of Klondike bill's favorite faction. Yes. Here they come. 
huge wow. general huge erection uh-huh major guns <laughs> and how about uh private lash larue there by the way, I talked to Lash a couple of weeks ago. Did I tell you about this? No, you did not. I didn't know he was still alive. That's great. He sent me an email and reached out and said, Hey man, just wanted to tell you how much I'm enjoying the shows. How about roll tight on that? By the way, did you know that Tyleen oh, Buck way. is all over the Twitter machine? Did you know this? Do, do what again? Tyleen Buck, major guns. She's all over the oh. Twitter machine. Did you know this? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I did know that. Oh, really? Now, how, yeah. did you, how did you know that? Uh, I don't know how I know that, but I do know that. <laughs> is, is, is she is she a porn star now by chance? Well, let me just that. say, if you go to at the Tyleen Buck, um, her profile picture is uh, some hash browns. Excuse me. Oh wow! Sm- scattered, really? covered in chunks. Whoa, 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 whoa! What's going on there? <laughs> yeah, it's it's all it's all the way live. Klondike Bill would really like this Twitter handle. Good gracious! Got any uh, birch chilies coming out of there? <laughs> No, there's no, there's no birds chili here. <laughs> okay. Just I did make it sure. <laughs> oh, I, I, guess, hey. I guess we should mention, um, Tylene Buck He's got an is, airport is, there. is, is doing, um, mm. adult film things. Yes, she's yeah. A, she's a fitness model and adult entertainer yeah. of sorts. Yes, yeah. Um, I believe she even has, um, products that she sells. I bet she does not just performances, but like, um, We'll call them replica items. Does she own? Oh. Air, does she own an airport, Conrad? Because it uh, it looks like I saw a landing strip right there, <laughs> and I wanted to know if yeah. that was her private. She does. Her yeah. private. Yes, her she private does. Airfield. Yeah. Well, the, well, you know, I don't Lynn, know listen. You've heard? Have you heard why it ended with uh, Matt Coon? No, I don't listen to any shit Matt Coon does. Are you crazy? Yeah. Nobody else does either. But if you did, you would have heard that. Yeah, because people have been really razzing me and Eric pretty hard for the last month or so because we're selling boner pills. Did you know about this? <laughs> no. So um, there's, a, there's a phenomenal product. It's not really a pill. It's a chewable, so it's faster. So yeah. Klondike Bill would like it. And anyway, Bischoff's really been using it and putting it over in a big way. So people have been ragging on us for selling quote-unquote boner pills, but they're really not. It's blue chew. It's a chewable. It's awesome. Roll Tide. Uh, you can get your first shipment for free. Just pay five dollars shipping. Use our code eighty three weeks. Can I product test it? Taste one, eat no, one right now. And see if taping. it comes. You know, no, see no. if it works for the end of the show. Well, you call down. Have, it's not a video. Can I? Show. Can I ask you to slap dick something? Yes. What? How come it? How come we're selling chewable Viagra in the middle of a shit match? What's going on with with our lives? I'll here? let you talk about this. Uh, well, first of all, it's not a shit match. It's Hoovy and Chavo. That's not shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, it's actually a very good match. Uh, but hey. Uh, this was one of the uh, first events, I believe, that we actually "quote unquote" sweetened with crowd noise, oh. and uh, you can you can tell because after about maybe an hour into the show, you're thinking that's the same girl screaming, <laughs> and uh, that's uh, that, that's how we were doing at that time. But we had a very good crowd here, uh, I thought, if I remember, uh, and uh, it's what, two, uh, my goodness, Hubintu was pointing at his. Had his gimmick there. Mm-hmm. Salute you. Oh, oops, he heard it. And he's grabbing it. And he's kicking his feet up in the air. God bless him. All so right. what I was getting to on this whole why it ended thing is while they're mm-hmm. making fun of us for mm-hmm. Blue Chew and, and mm-hmm. the boner pills, quote unquote, mm-hmm. they're actually selling. Um, mm. It's a it's a it's a it's a <laughs> sexual aid for men. So it's like, um, I mean, I think you guys back in your day, you used to like keep them in your pocket. Oh, like a condom. No, no, <laughs> no, it was to be, to be, you know, like an alternative, like an alternative, an alternative to a condom, no, to the real thing. So it's like, to- um, I think y'all used to call it like a pocket something or other back in your day. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't. Well, it's it's a jack off aid. That's what oh, okay. I, I see. I understand. That's what okay. That's what Matt it, Coon's selling. So Matt Coon no longer okay. does the, he no longer does the audio for our show, and right. he doesn't do the audio for Pritchard's show, and he doesn't do the audio for Bischoff's show because he's selling jack off sleeves with Robbie E. Wow, how quickly they have fallen. 
I mean, I really do feel like that's really what he was doing for us too. He was <laughs> what selling jack off sleeves well, for we're, us. We're, we're a couple of dicks, and he was covering us up, right? Like making us look good. Good God, I can't believe we are. Hang on, I'm looking at this now, and we are nine minutes, forty four, forty five seconds into the show. We've already talked about uh, Major Guns being a mm. adult star. We've already talked about boner pills and jack off sleeves. Good God, this one is going downhill in a hurry. Well, you invited Casio. Here we are. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I guess I did. Oh. Uh, who was the heel here? You know, that's a great question. And I don't think even Vince Russo himself knows. Well, it, it is a good question because, you know, in the day, and even back in 2000, you know, it was a heel baby face. You got to cheer for one and boo for the other business. Now, uh, if you listen to the commentary, uh, Mark Madden was kind of into the filthy animals, and we were kind of behind uh, General Erection and the uh, Misfits in Action. Uh, so I guess they were the baby faces, but uh, but I'm really not sure. It's kind of got it's kind of like a lot of gray here and not a lot of black and white. Yeah, I think um, I think he's more of a tweener. Who is? You know, like. All of the filthy animals guys. Like I think Chavo right. I think Chavo is is trying to be the baby face here. And I think the filthy animals are good guys or bad guys, depending on their opponent. That's just my guess. Uh, another thing about this show that that I uh, when I went back and I watched, and I did watch this one as a matter of fact, uh I uh I, I noticed and this is not a knock on Mark Madden, and you can give your opinion on this, uh and Cassio, you can too if you were alive back in uh, two thousand. <laughs> Uh, you can give your opinion on this, but it's not a knock on Mark Madden nor Scott Hudson. I really enjoyed working with both of them, and we, I thought we had a good rapport. All of us did. But to me, the show goes downhill. It, it, it doesn't seem as big if Heenan's not there. Oh, yeah. One yeah, hundred. Heenan adds I, a lot to it. I agree. Yeah, I, I just, uh, of course, you know, Oakland is there, uh, and uh, that makes it seem big. But with Heenan and Oakland together, that just made it elevated the show. And, of course, when Heenan and, uh, and Dusty was were with me, it even elevated the show even more. Uh, so so I, think, uh, I think when you tune on a pay-per-view, you see me and Madden and, and uh, Scott Hudson as kind of a downer. And then if you uh, – and, and I invite all of our listeners uh, watching this and going back and maybe uh, watching it again to listen to this commentary here. And you can barely hear what I say. You can barely hear what I say. And you know, that's by design, don't you? Well, yeah, I would imagine. I mean, because even now I'm trying to figure out how I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He, he's been I'm cutting just, you down since we started the show tonight. Well, what, what else is new? What the fuck else is new? <laughs> let me, let me Watch out this. up top. Oh, my God. I'm a big fan of Mark Madden on commentary. I know I'm in yeah. the minority, but I agree with you that Heenan had a big fight feel to it. Right. Exactly. And, and I agree with you about Mark Madden. I, I like Mark Madden. On, now, what the fuck is this all about? They all got masks on. <laughs> they all got fucking masks. I, I, I don't get it now, and I didn't get it when they were walking out. So they all walk out with a mask, and guess what? Nothing happened. They didn't even take their shot. They didn't take a shot of him. How about that? That's so stupid. Hey, yeah, I know. If if you're going to do an angle like see, and now they take the mask off, and Mickey J says, "I got to I got to get a cigarette later, so leave." How, how about the gingerbread man down here in the bottom right? <laughs> oh, the uh, gosh, I can't even remember his name. You talking about the uh, the redheaded uh, red referee? Referee? Yeah, I don't remember his name. Yeah, I get you, Eric. Hey, so uh, we had a, a super fan <laughs> send us a rap remix. Yes, we did. For the Shivani Drip song. I think we should play that for our listeners. Yeah, I think we should. Uh, we'll put that in. It's I'm the old soul. I'm from Milton, Massachusetts. This is what happened when. This is for my man, Shivani. 
Shivani's back causing mass destruction What happened when with Conrad Thompson When we're talking Ric Flair Best believe it's Cat Bass She better have hair Cause if she don't He ain't hitting that Don't fuck around With school board and ham cues Another running from the one and only Lois Rules Glad that Tony's back Don't you know that we need ya 16 years without that commentary need ya Shivani Ghosting on a bitch Shivani drink Ghosting on a bitch Ghosting on a bitch this is too freaking good. Show bunny strip go sting on a bitch. Selling t-shirts and mortgages, we about to get rich. Coughing on roller skates, thanks to Turner Broadcast. Might have lasted if Flash LaRue wasn't a fat ass. Got the candy man, heard was killing all the cities. If Tony don't recall, it was the booking committee. Flair hit it first. And you can bet it. Fuck Dave Meltzer and his Japanese fetish. The Yeti and Hogan having sexual relations. Shivani is the leader of Slap Dick Nation. Shivani drink go sting on a bitch. Shivani drip go sting on a bitch. Shivani drip go sting on a bitch. Tony goes. Shivani drip go sting on a bitch. Selling t-shirts and mortgages, we bout to get rich Props to the pod, father, your podcasts are roll tight The dog called Klondike, build a book of glass, bottom boat ride Conrad always trying to link Tony in the Z-Man But Tony's got Medusa, come on, can't you see me? Gotta keep it real, the podcast is top shelf Tony, he wants that damn six-man bell Well, fans, that's the end of my rhymes The tape machines are rolling, we're out of time Show money, drip, go sting on a bitch can you believe that this is a real thing? Uh, Sh- shout out to a uh, super fan, Nick Matrano for making that one happen. Uh, he is the old soul, AKA MC buckshot. And right now that's what we see in the ring. Uh, everybody is trying to jump in with different masks and out mm-hmm. comes bombs away herself. Mm-hmm. Right. I think she's here to sell us uh, something for why it ended. <laughs> I, I think I think she's probably selling why it ended happy. <laughs> and now she's going to show everybody oh, okay. what she's got. And you know what? She was a she was a very attractive lady. Let me ask you this: um, she has any, no idea what she's doing. Any here. rumor and innuendo about her in the mm. back? Her in the pack. Her in the back, B A C K. I'm referring to the backstage. Oh, uh, like, well, what did you hear about what happened backstage with Tylene Buck? I didn't hear that anything. No, no, you would never go. You would never throw that out unless you heard something. Well, does it involve a cat bath? Oh wow, wow. No, I I didn't hear anything about that. Okay, I was just asking. Mm-hmm. I heard uh, <laughs> things. Uh, <laughs> I heard uh, things about her and. Uh, Let's see. Uh, nah, Brian Clark, maybe. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, uh, is this one of those where you need to like kayfabe the HJ? No, no. See, you know, don't start that shit again. No, I didn't uh, start it last week. Animal. No, let, 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 no you started it because you played it. <laughs> let me rephrase this. Don't start that shit again, motherfucker. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. I, I appreciate the song, by the way. Yeah, Nick did a great job, and I feel like you're just you're mad and it's ruining the mood now. I mean, first of all, you've got Hooman Two Guerrero, who's a damn good looking man. Let me ask you this: and Wow, this is Tornado right. DDT. Hold on, here's a cover one, two. My God, he wins it. It's uh, Sergeant Lieutenant Loco, and he's going to grab Tylene Buck, and they're going to run away. In your opinion, yeah, who was better looking, Hooman Two Guerrero or Tylene Buck? I think Hooventu was better. Oh, my God. Is that Van Hammer? Yes. We can't get rid of that motherfucker, can we? No. <laughs> we can't. He shows up. I mean, he's, he's a member of uh, of uh, Raven's Flock, and he's a member of Jesus. Man, give him another gimmick. <laughs> Call this replay here, Tony. All right. Up on top is Lieutenant Loco. Here he goes. Taking flight and going down. And is this where Hooventude got hit in the nuts? I don't think so. Here comes Hoovy off. He's going to try a swan dive press. And he didn't even try to make a count. And now the Tornado DTT. One, two, three. Your winner is Lieutenant Loco. And now let's take a look. I think we're going to the fat guys. Well, not them, of course. 
although Bill DeMott is pretty fat there. Uh, we're going to go to the fat guys at ringside. And take no, well, no, we're not. Look, look, I want to tell you guys something. Do you guys have any tickets to a James Brown concert? You can get me. What? He's dead. Bullshit. He's dead. James Brown lives on forever, forever. And I want you three motherfuckers to listen to me right now. I'm the commissioner of WCW. I don't want any more of this bullshit. Yeah. Let's appreciate that they're done. watching TV here with no TV. Like there's right. no cable hooked up. <laughs> I thought oh. it was a microwave. I'd also like to point out that Jeff Jarrett is wearing a copy of the big gold belt here. It's not the actual big gold belt. You can tell right. because it's on black leather and it's solid gold. It's all gold everywhere. Yeah. What? And these, uh, these, uh, opera singers, the fat lady sing type thing. Just, <laughs> is there anything more stupid than this? Wasn't that my Halloween outfit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know what? Uh, congratulations. Thumbs up for trying some shit, right? You got to try shit. No, you don't. No, yeah, you do. You no. got to try shit. So let's talk about this guy. This guy is uh, mm. Big Vito. He's got a podcast over with Vince Russo, or he used to. And he was uh, uh, an underneath guy for ECW first. And then he got started to get a little bit of a push there in ECW. Eventually had a run here and then even wound up in, in the WWE for a bit. And here we see him attacking like full on Terry Funk. And of course they're going to chop it up here for the hardcore title. what did you think of the WCW hardcore division, Tony? It felt like a swing and a miss for me. It was a big swing and a miss. And I, I didn't, I, I thought it was a swing and a miss as I'm watching it. And it as develops, but now Conrad that you and I have gone back and watched ECW. It's like, yeah, what were we trying to do? You're trying to copy something, but do it very, very poorly. Right, right. Almost and like so, when you tried to bring in red and yellow Hulk Hogan. You were trying to copy something, but very poorly. Right. And later on, we're going to see uh, Dale Torborg's wife, who we called her Asia when they had a China. Yeah. Uh, and uh, again, here we are in 2000, trying to copy ECW and doing a terrible job of it, and trying to copy the WWF and doing a terrible job of it. So there's there's your reasons there's your reasons why we went down the shitter in a hurry. And now we're going to see, my goodness, uh, Cassio, let me tell you something, buddy. If you don't watch yourself, when you turn 65, you're going to look like the guy on the left here. 65? So, yeah. You, yeah, it's me in person lately, Tony. <laughs> okay, when you're 40. <laughs> By the way, could, could that shot of that sledgehammer be any tighter to let you know that it's fucking rubber? Yeah, is that something? Where's uh? Anybody know where Ralph is these days? Uh, yeah. I no, his, I I, I got don't know. his email two weeks ago, and I tried to book him for Starcast really? and bounce back. I thought it would have been a great surprise to have him come out during our What Happened When show. What? Just say no to crack. It's pointing to his <laughs> asshole. Yeah, wouldn't it be something? Ralph has showed up and he's like all swelt and you know like skinny and looks great and. I was going to say we could have Cassio just pretend to be Ralphus until you said spelt and ripped. And I was like, well, he's booked that day. Uh, you know, as uh, we've seen, uh, we, we've seen before Ralph was getting involved in matches. He's going to get his, he's going to get his ass kicked in this thing. And, and again, I, I, you need to ask Eric, Eric probably doesn't even know the, if he did or not, did Ralphus actually sign waivers to get involved in these matches? Because he wasn't a wrestler. He didn't train. Wait, he was a, hang on, was hang a, on. Uh, let, me, let me call Eric right now. I don't recall. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Does, he, does Eric say I don't recall? I don't recall. Oh, wow. He says that, huh? Do they, do they give him shit like they give me for oh, not recalling? Way, 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 way more. Yeah. Because, you know, if he says he does, if Eric Bischoff says he doesn't recall, you know what it is, don't you? He doesn't recall. You know, he's fucking lying to you. Oh, no. He, he, <laughs> no. He, yeah, he recalls all that shit. By the way, I think we're, we're talking over what could be the comedy highlight of the show. We got Norman Smiley in the back. Here comes Ralph. Yeah. His pants are falling right. down. Right. He's got an aluminum <laughs> trash can. And he nails Vito LaGrasso once, twice, three times a lady. <laughs> yes, sir, man. And uh, we're also going to see him use the trash can lid. And he, oh, there he, he, he went to find the trash. Look at him. Oh, yeah. Waddle over there to oh, get the lid. Yeah. Let me ride that donkey, donkey. 
Where are you and on? where are you at on the big wiggle, Tony? I like yeah. the big wiggle. Yeah, I know you like the big wiggle, but here's what I like. I like Ralph is hiding behind the trash can lid here. See? He's hiding behind the trash can lid. Oh my God. Yeah, this hardcore stuff was just uh it just it just did not work. Oh, oh. Come on, lay him in, Ralphus. What the fuck, man? Come on. Oh, there you go. About the fourth shot. <laughs> what the fuck are we watching right now? <laughs> I don't know. This, I can't wait to dress up like him. This <laughs> look fire. at this. Look at see? Hide behind the leaf. Oh my god. You know what? That's I'm a great high. call. If we dyed Cassio's hair yeah. gray. I'm in. And and like marked out some of his teeth. He could do a run in of what happened when. <laughs> he could be your Shivani personal security. My favorite is my favorite is Tony going, man. He needs to sign Ralph needs to sign a waiver because he's not really a wrestler. And literally a minute later, why are you hitting him with a fucking garbage can lid? <laughs> like a real wrestler. Well, if you're gonna get booked, you might as well fucking do it. You know what I bet? A lot of catering plates back. Uh, no, I, what? Uh, yeah, that's going to hurt. Hey, uh, what I bet is that Eric did. They didn't pay him another dime for this. No, they gave him an extra 500 bucks. Did they really per, uh, Jericho? Of course, Jericho wasn't here in 2000, but allegedly they're okay. giving him like an extra 500 bucks a show. Okay. Well, that's good. Which, because if you ask Eric, Eric not be, not, might not be able to recall that. So, oh my God, they're going into catering. <laughs> Here's what's great. This guy had a whole plate full of uh, cups. Not one drop of liquid at any of the cups when he it knocked was, the tray out. I, I don't know. Replay that. I think that was a skinny Dave Silva. Holy shit. No, those words don't touch. Skinny and Dave Silva don't touch. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, now, remember, we are, we're going we're gonna to top this one, guys. Hang on to your seats. We're going to top this one by having a graveyard match a little bit later on. Oh, here comes Rick. Here comes here Cassio. Come. Comes Cassio. Papa Cassio. <laughs> I can't wait. He's bleeding. Oh. He's still, and no, Ralph he, he, has, has gigged himself. No, Ralph has, hasn't gigged himself. That's the gingivitis. <laughs> you can't fake gingivitis. <laughs> oh, he punched him out of the shoes. <laughs> oh, he did. Oh, Lord. Well, let's get the referee back in the ring. Imagine being in this crowd. And like, let's say you weren't really a wrestling fan and let's say somebody talks you into coming to this Yeah. and you see all these guys with silly masks in match number one right. and, and they tell and who are these guys? Well, that's huge erection, right? And who's this girl ripping her uh -oh. top off. And now, mm -hmm. wait, why is the Italian hitting the mentally handicapped man <laughs> in the crotch? Mate? <laughs> in the crotch mate. Because it's WCW circa 2000 is what it is. And of course, let's find a table. How about you get a good shot that WCW is using a wooden ring here? Yeah. Not a, not a metal ring, a wooden ring. And yeah, Ralph is definitely has a blood spot on top of his head. I don't know if yeah. that's uh, cancer or something he needs to get checked out or what? No, he's uh, he, he, he apparently gigged himself in the back there. Look at this. And the, 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 the table, <laughs> the one leg, one side of the table won't. Oh my God. Jesus, I, I look, stop the tape. Stop the tape. We're done. I knew we were done by, by, by oh. 10 minutes into this thing, man. Oh no. Oh, oh and he's here we go, man. Ralph is just, uh, Ralph is not <laughs> feeling anything right now. Anyway, <laughs> just <laughs> look at this. Perfectly this, stale. this is unbelievable. Oh. oh, man. And here comes Norman. Can't pin One, Ralphus. two, three. Jesus. Why are you pinning Ralph us? Cause he can pin either, either one of them. It's a, it's a handicap for the hardcore. I'm, but I'm just saying like, he's a real Italian. He shouldn't want this. Come on. Take on the real wrestler. Mr. Norman sure. smile. Who would have thought by the way that Norman smiley would be the guy with the staying power. He's still a trainer down at NXT Vito, uh, suing WWE for CTE yeah. and doing a podcast, which explains why he's doing a podcast, I guess. And yeah. of course, Ralph was, Working at Badcock Furniture now. <laughs> <laughs> they just had a big fourth sale. They did. 15% off. It was a store closing sale. They're doing another one next year. That same Look time. at this. Man, I'm telling you. There was uh, that. There was no... Uh, 
There was no working on that splash. Oh, wow, that was right I, on top of his ass. I don't know that I ever told you this. Did I ever tell you about the time Vito Lagrasso spit on me? Really? <laughs> yeah, I've been a troll since way back when. Uh, well, really? Yeah, so like October of 98. Oh, here's your man. Here's Goldberg. Yeah. Yep. By the way, I guess we should mention Goldberg is now our ad guy. So if you'd like to advertise here on what happened when, we can get you in. We can do it very affordably, and uh, you can just email us. We'll tell you the email address in a minute. Take it away. All right. Uh, I want to ask you, is it really backstage politics here, uh, Kevin, like they talk about in WCW? Are the backstage politics running rampant? Well, just let me say this. Uh, We're going to be out of business soon, but my career is going to go on. Uh, I just like to say, uh, fuck Hulk Hogan. Uh, Let's see. I also like to say, fuck Vince Rizzo. I'd also like to say, fuck uh, a guy from Alabama named Conrad Thompson, who apparently has been trolling me on Twitter for the last 10 to 15 years. And I just, uh, well, we came in, we made a lot of money, we popped the house big time, and then it all went fucking downhill. And it's not because of us, it's because of the booking. See, I'm looking right at you. It's because of the booking. Uh, I'm not going to take the blame for us going downhill. Hogan's not going to take the blame. And, of course, Scott Hall is not going to take the blame. Peace out. Who's to blame for WCW going in the shitter? We'll try to answer that question later on in this program. Right now, let's take a look at this. Ah! Screaming Daphne! Ah! Do, do me a Daphne scream there, Cassio. Ah! <laughs> okay. Thank you. I asked for Casio scream, and we've got Robert Plant. Jesus By the way, <laughs> does this not remind you of how roll tied Stacy Keebler once was? Oh boy! You know what? I thought Daphne was roll tied too. You know, had this, I did. had this worked out, do you realize that I'd be hanging out with Stacy Keebler at all the holidays? I'm I'm sorry. Had so, Stacey Keebler. Start, start, wait a minute. Let me, let me sit. Let me take a breath. Okay. And throw that line at me again. Had this worked out with Stacey Keebler and David Flair, I would be hanging out with Stacey Keebler oh. at Thanksgiving, Christmas. Gotcha. I uh, thought you were, I thought you were, uh, you know, saying something else. No, just saying okay. she, she would have been my <laughs> sister-in-law. That wouldn't have been. Oh, okay. I got you. Right. Wait a minute. Wait. Whoa. Time out. You're saying that her and David Flair were a real thing? Yeah. No. You didn't know that? No, I didn't. No, that was a real thing. That was a real thing? Yeah, in real life. Apparently, uh, he could sell. (laughs) And we're going to get to see a wedding gown match here, which I'm pretty excited about. And you know, this makes me think about a song that we played last week. Yeah, uh, my head's getting ready to explode, though, knowing that. And what... Well, dude, we talked about this. This is the reason we started selling flare hit at first shirts. Okay. Cause hmm. I was saying, Hey, George Clooney thinks he did something. Well, guess uh, what? Flare hit at first. I thought we were talking about the old man. No, no. <laughs> the old man. Now the old man was revealed here in storyline. Right. As being pop pop, but no, in real life. Wow. We're all time. Oh boy. And how about this? All right, this is a part uh, you're going to see here where the the wedding cake is destroyed. First of and, all, first of all, let me just say, what the fuck are we watching right now? Yeah, I know. I mean, what what have we gone from guys in mask to a fat guy getting flapjacked to? <laughs> Let's just remember, we are like we are like ten years removed from Sting uh-huh. winning the world title, the Steiner brothers just uh-huh. t- tearing it up. Yeah, I mean. We're, we're, I know we're 15 years removed from the rock and roll express and the midnight express and Tully Blanchard, dusty roads and Ricky steamboat. But instead now here we are. Yeah. Six months away from being in the shitter <laughs> on the other end. Oh my God. Uh, she was just absolutely fine, but here, here's the story and well, I'll, I'll get to it at the end of the match, but, uh, Oh, are you okay? Yeah, man. So last week we were playing uh, a little Clarence Carter stroking, and I thought uh, it was time to introduce everybody to a new song. Are you ready for a new song? Yeah. 
I think this is going to be a good one. You think it's going to be a good one? You know, props to the way the girl looks, uh, the way that uh, Miss Hancock looks here, but man, that is one. Oh, smoke! Well, hang on. Excuse me? Let me ask you, are you really suggesting that Daphne was more relevant than Stacey Keebler? No, no, I'm not. But I'm saying she was pretty much so in her own way. Yeah, as far as goth chicks are, are concerned, she was probably the queen of them at that time. I love these said goth chicks. <laughs> What's wrong? I don't know, I just never expected to hear that phrase from you. <laughs> but she was. Okay, now here. Right now, uh, David Crockett is in the backstage area. First of all, he's going bonkers that we actually had it out there. And the fact that they are destroying this cake, and they really can destroy the cake, and they destroyed it right in ringside, just really pissed David off, and understandably so. Because now we're gonna, it's gonna end up shutting down the whole night, which by this time is probably not bad, because the whole night's fucked anyway. Uh, you know what? I will make you feel good. Mm -hmm. That you love is good. Oh, she just pants those slick Jonathan, and he's got his, uh, his, his, his jersey. Yeah. Oh, now they pants. David Flair, everybody's pants. Oh my god. David Flair standing there with no pants on, doing nothing. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite shots of the whole match here. Watch it. Ready? Here it comes. Yes. I wanna lick you up! <laughs> What's going on right now? What, 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 how awful is this? You know what? This is like a parody of a wrestling show. Okay. Uh, the, 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 you, do you have Dave Meltzer's uh, ratings for this thing anywhere? <laughs> oh, you mean or he, my ratings? Or he, did he just kill himself right in the, during the second match? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> he, he gave it two lollipops on the candy liquor scale. <laughs> Oh, God. Stick down my tongue. I want to make you come. Oh, here comes a crowbar. I want to make you feel good. Notice yeah, now only a handful of fans are cheering for this. And nobody knows what the fuck to do with it. Like no, you. no, because it's a complete clusterfuck. A hundred thousand buys on pay-per-view. Are you serious? A hundred thousand buys? It was fifteen thousand more. The Great American Bash, 35,000 more than Slambury. All right, Cassie is getting out of hand. Right? Gotta shut that yeah. off. I took a blow chew. <laughs> oh, God. The crowbar's this... in his underwear. Yep. Everybody's in their underwear. Oh! So, evening gown match, but yet crowbar's in there. Devin Storm yep. with David Flair. And they're going to try to choke out David Flair with his own pants. Jean shorts. Hmm. And David Flair sells it by sticking his tongue out. Cause that's what you do when you're choking. Stick your tongue out. <laughs> okay. And what is she going to do here? Uh, full body stocking. And instead, and Stacey just comes in and says, who wants to see me ass naked? <laughs> <laughs> and everybody. And that's pops. how the match ends. <laughs> and then she says, okay, cool. I'm going to take <sighs> off my own hell. Wanna be? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Stacy was all right. Absolutely. So uh, here comes the cake. Hey, and and uh, you can imagine. I mean, okay, hindsight being what it, what it was, why don't we – it's hard for me to talk with this going on, but 
why don't we put the cake away from the ringside area? Because they're going to have to try to clean this shit up. Ooh. Oh. What the fuck are we watching? Wanna uh. be? <laughs> uh. Wedding cake liquor. Uh, and now, of course, here comes a cake and it goes all over the place. Uh, you know what? Uh, I, I've gone back and looked at shows before and I've looked at shows and I've said, you know, that wasn't so bad. This is awful. This is this is worse than I uh, than I imagined. <laughs> this is worse than I thought it was. <laughs> this is like. Somebody this thought, is, I mean, listen, I, I, I think Vince Russo is a nice man. He's always been very nice to me. And I know that's controversial to say these days because he's been. I love, Vince, I love Vince Russo. I do. I just treat people how they treat me. And he's always treated me like yes. gold. So I reciprocate yeah. and I think he's a nice guy, but good Lord, this is awful. But you know what? Yeah. We did get to see Stacy Keebler. So it yeah, can't, that, can't be yeah. that bad. Yeah. And look at, uh, and look at Daphne looking good, even though she looks like, uh, Devin storm was on the Indies two years prior to this. So he's tickled, but yeah, in reality, he'd probably rather be on any other part of this program than this brutal absolutely brutal but yeah you know and, and i i just think that oh my god uh let's oh, see what am I'm back. and let's see i got uh three tickets to see uh okay oh, no. kevin hart in uh in huntsville alabama where the fuck is huntsville alabama <laughs> and what did i get these tickets for what <laughs> and what the fuck oh geez i'm hearing some who's the guy behind hiding behind the fucking oh. broom Whoa, look at this. Hey, uh, I still got that shirt. Still got that shirt. And it actually fits me now. Can, um, can we get but, you to uh, do a video of yourself wearing this shirt this week on Patreon on oh, Patrol? Yeah. yeah, I'll do it. Absolutely, I'll do it. You know, I, God bless Scott Hudson. Through all this shit, he tried to make this as serious of a sporting event as he could. And I was, I was thinking, okay. I'm right with you, Scott. <laughs> Let's make it serious sporting event. But there ain't nothing serious going on here. Nothing. Is that his hat or just the stage, the desk hat? I, that's the desk hat. What, what's happening in the background here <laughs> that everybody's turning to? Is, is there a little candy licking going on back there? No, no. Again, if there's a fight in the stands, there's probably a bunch of people fighting amongst each other. <laughs> one saying, this event sucks. And the other guy says, does not. He says, does so. And they go to fisticuffs, and then they get thrown out, which is probably what they wanted to get anyway, thrown out. Want to be your ass kicker. <laughs> see? Now that I could get behind. <laughs> yeah. Well, and see, now here's what we're doing. We are filling time here. Uh, because you got to clean up the fucking cake. Got to clean up the fucking cake. Oh, gosh. See, look here. Look. Uh, well, my well, here's God. the deal, then. Let's, let's freestyle, and let's, uh, let's all assume roles. And I'll be Mark Madden and you be you, Tony. No, and you be Scott Hudson. And then we'll have, okay. we'll have Cassio be, uh, be you. Okay. Can you believe this shirt is going to be relevant in 2018, gentlemen? It's going to be awesome. Lois is going to love it. It's going to be in the closet full of dog hair, but it finally fits 18 years from this pay-per-view, folks. Now, what do you got to ask yourself? How long is it going to take? To clean up the fucking wedding cake. Right now, I've got it in a good eye shot. Guys, I'm not going to let you talk right now because I'm on a roll. Right now, I want you to know if you've seen my Patreon, you need to sign up for it. If you're a low-key big hog, I'll actually do a strip tease and unbutton every button on this Hawaiian shirt live on my news feed. Who's that? Who, who are we doing here? Are you still talking? Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm Jesus. still talking. <laughs> Keep going, Cassio. Come Shit, man. Air. I love that they're showing them cleaning it up. <laughs> we couldn't have a vignette or anything, an interview. There was no plan to clean this <laughs> Wait, up. And now they're taking the mat up. Oh. Can you, guys, we could have just took the mat up to begin with and replaced it with a new mat. That would have been too easy. We're still going. I'm still talking about this. <laughs> Sooner or later. Well, and I'm glad you're done talking Woo! because I want to tell everybody about the strippers that I've got coming into the studio this week here in Pittsburgh. You're right. D uh, Diamond Al's Cabaret is coming to town, and I've got one porn whore after another, including Stormy Daniels. She's going to tell us 
what Trump's really been pissing her off up there. And we're going to make sure that we cover all the ins and outs at my radio show here in Pittsburgh. Well, let me say, Mark, that I'm a federal agent and I carry a gun. And if I had had one, I would have killed myself here tonight. Instead of watching this bullshit, let's go to the ring. Uh, oh, uh, and to make matters worse. Here we go. You know, as if this couldn't get any worse. Yeah. Here we are with Stasiak and Palumbo. By yeah. the way, both of these guys had cool looks. Neither one of them really ever hit the way they should have or could have. Maybe I don't think that they're, um, I don't know. Why didn't they well, connect I, with the fans? What's your take? Well, I, I think, uh, you, you, uh, could have is the right way to say it. Uh, should have, I don't know. They, they have they had no personality. That's why. They really, they really had no personality and you know, you can say that's their fault. You either have it or you don't. Right. Or you can say that maybe, uh, uh, that we didn't work with them enough to develop a personality as well. I don't think, look, let's go back to some of the greats, Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, Jim Cornette. I don't think many people work with them on their personalities. I think they, they just had it. And I don't think these guys had it. And I don't think chronic had it either. Although. Chronic did look the part here, man. They look pretty. They look pretty good coming out. Yeah, one of my favorite catchphrases uh, was when they did. Uh, they put out something called uh, "breaking necks and cashing checks," and I thought that was fucking awesome. Yeah. Right. So here we go for the World Tag Team Championship, and uh, and I, I think we all know what got Chronic right, got Milk Guy. We get it. Was there a sign back there that says positively steroids behind that sign? Did I see that? Probably. <laughs> wow. Uh, chronic 419. There you go, man. Okay. See, I, I'm going to, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to uh, let you in on a th uh, thing here. Uh, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I didn't understand what chronic meant. Oh, are you serious? What? I did. I did not. How did you not know? I just, I guess I just wasn't and still am not hip. I didn't understand what chronic meant. What are you laughing about back there? <laughs> well, because here's the deal. No, I it's mean, Lois behind me laughing. Oh yeah. Does Lois know what the chronic is? No, she, when I said I'm not hip, she laughed. Okay. Well, she knew that. And, <laughs> she agreed with me. Uh, but no, I, I just did not, I did not understand it. And there's a couple of, in the course of, uh, and, of course, Mark Madden understood it. In the course of this match here, Mark is going to make a couple of references to Chronic. Uh, and I just completely – goes over my head, and I completely ignore it. So <laughs> The first time – by the way, you're way behind here because, like, almost 10 years prior to this, like, the number one rap album of all time was put out, and it was uh -huh. called Dr. Dre, The Chronic. But okay, I, well, I, I never did listen to that what? album. Are you no. serious? Oh, don't look for any of that music, please, for oh, God's sake. Geez. What are you talking about? Don't look okay. for any of that music. Don't, well, no, I, because I know you're looking for it. What are you talking about? I, I, I have no idea. Ben Adams or Sean Stacey or Chuck Palumbo, man. I, I would have to go back and, and think long and hard about that. I, I don't have one. Uh, did, uh, did Chuck become, uh, when uh, after the sale, did Chuck become a, sitting, uh, a star with the WWE? He did, yeah. Okay. Did he have any personality back then? Um, yeah, he had a gay wedding that went over real big. Wait a minute, they made him a gay, gay character on the no. WWF too? No, they just teased that he was going to marry Billy Gunn. He didn't actually. Okay, all right. No, you just never know. I mean, you know, you run out of shit to talk about. and Tony, have you, have you ever grabbed your Nina and been straight tripping? No, I have not. Huh. Do you, no, have, an, do you have a Nina? I have a, I had one. Uh, another five pounds or so, I'll probably find it. <laughs> Thanks, DDP Yoga. <laughs> I I may I don't I don't know if that's if that's another one of you hip millennial words for your joint your, your Nina joint. your joint listen to you your joint <laughs> one of Are you words a, for a, your a joint. Nina is a nine millimeter oh okay he's referring to a pistol 
A pistol? No. Uh-uh. But if Nina. you grab a Nina, you can be straight tripping right after that. How would you how would you describe someone? I mean, have you ever heard of someone straight tripping? No. 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 As okay, long- you guys you guys have successfully painted me as an old <laughs> fogey cornball motherfucker. Anything else you'd like me to answer? It didn't take much paint, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> um just a little bit of trim paint. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've got a new sponsor on the show this week. I feel like now would be a good time <laughs> to tell everybody about them. Really? Yeah. It's uh, it's a specialty treat mm. year round. <laughs> it's a gift that keeps on giving. Nina R. And, Ross? and what is that, Conrad? What's our new sponsor? D's Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, from the Chronic album. Oh, they come in packages of two only. These nuts I've heard. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I've heard the these nuts kid. These nuts I've heard. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Oh, t- hey, hey, comrade, turn that shit off. I'm watching a great match here, man. Are you? I'm watching a great match. There's a drop kick by Stacey Yank and a one and a two count. And uh, Clark almost came in. Just take you back, Tony. No. I, I, uh, I, I wonder if... Uh, I, hate to, I hate to say, I hate to rip on anybody's music or anybody's genre, but Conrad, you and I could do something like that. Probably make some money, don't you think? We're doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That's some, that's some, that's some bad shit. Not your deal? You talking no, about it, the beach or the song? No, the the, the the song it's it's not good. It's not good. I bet I bet I can come up with something that you like. Yeah, I know. Uh meanwhile whole career did it not yeah missing completely did he did it did he do anything uh after the after we went down yeah really yeah he went to uh wrestlemania the week after you went down right he sat in a skybox 
and he recorded all of his conversations with people who were there uh-huh. and then bragged about how he had recorded the conversations and they found out and they fired his ass. So his run in wrestling lasted about seven days longer than yours, Tim. <laughs> so he was hired by the WWE, WWF yeah. back then. He was going to be given an opportunity there. Yeah. All right. And so he went in and recorded, secretly recorded all these people talking with him. Yep. And did he post them anywhere or just brag about it? I think he was just bragging about it. I don't know that you could really post it back then. So does it exist anywhere right now? Uh, the recordings? Yeah. Uh, I don't know that they're out there. They might be. And that was it. Never to be heard from again. You got it. I, wow. I think the mini disc of that is next to the six man <laughs> tag belt somewhere. <laughs> yes. And next to a couple of eight track tapes, which re- which reminds me. Lois will 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 attest to this. We uh, we had some guy come and put a uh, fan up for us. And we went into this back room and we, she was digging through the stuff and she found a box of eight track tapes just sitting out in the middle of our house here. Not in the garage, not in the attic, not stored away, Hang just on. sitting in her laundry room. Uh, eight track uh, tapes. I don't even believe that. Of how many? Yeah. How many, give or take? Uh, it's probably about 10, which is 10 fucking too many. Didn't we find the eight track tapes or not? Yes, I did. Ha. And she's pissed off that I found them. Do you remember any of them? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, those are collector's items. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I think one was Simon and Garfunkel, to be honest with you. Maybe when you call me, you can call. <laughs> I don't know what Cassie is doing anymore. I don't know what he's doing either, but I know what I'm doing. I am not enjoying this fucking match at all. And I, I don't know. And maybe it's maybe it's the fact that I'm that I'm tainted because I thought the show was bad. Wait, Some of those wait, fans wait, are wait, into it. On. They what, really are. What on the far side? Your tank. What's wrong with your tank? What's wrong with my what? Your tank. My tank. No, Ronnie Garvin. <laughs> Your taint. You said something's wrong with my taint. Oh, I I don't know what I said. Oh. Uh, here comes the finish. Oh, it's a spool. Sp- Shit. He could have really hurt himself there. <laughs> no, that was that was actually a much safer doomsday device, and I like it. Breaking yeah. necks and cash and checks. Your new tag team champions of the world, Brian and Brian. Fans, uh, some of the fans in the back uh, there were pretty much into it, believe it or not. Nobody else was, as you can see from that wide shot. <laughs> but like those we fans were in the back, and uh, yes, sir. Mother, and Clark just said, motherfucker, we're the champions. I guess we should uh, mention here that this match got half a star. Okay, the, there you go. The Daphne I knew you and those Hancock out. match got negative star, one star. Okay. Big Vito and Ralphus got a dud. Yeah. Uh, your opening bout got three stars and, uh, coming up next. Well, that's going to be a real wrestling match. Can you believe it? Mm-hmm. But yeah. what we should set the stage here, uh, this, uh, show went down on July 9th. We're right okay. on the 18 year anniversary when this one happened, uh, Daytona, Florida, the same site as bash at the beach 96 where wrestling was changed forever. When Hulk Hogan became a bad guy. Right. But we're back here four years later and the show's not going to be nearly as impactful. Uh, we've only got 4,447 paid in attendance here, which is pretty ridiculous when you think about it. And here is Jeff Jarrett again, right? Interrupting the cat and he's got the fat lady with him. Okay. Uh, either that or that's Jerry Jarrett and drag. I'm not sure. Okay. Here's, here's, <laughs> here's one of the things this little, uh, vignette here, if you can call it a vignette. And what happened in this match are two things, going back and looking at this and thinking about it when it happened, that sold me on the fact that the Hogan walking out and the finish of the Hogan match and the interview by Russo was not, I'm not talking about this bullshit that's going on here, that was was a work. Because what happens here is Jared tells Cat, he tells Cat, listen, I'm going to screw up your show. Right. By the way, it, 
um, it's already been established that what we're going to see is a work. I know, but there's a lot of people think it's shoot. Well, there was a part of it that was a shoot. The part that was a shoot is where Russo came back out and cut a promo. Okay. That part was not agreed upon. Everything else that happened was agreed upon. Here we see Canyon doing his best DDP impression. He's got his hair dyed blonde. He's got a DDP shirt on. He's doing the bang. He's got Paige's book, Positively Page, and he's calling himself Positively Canyon, which is why there was a takeoff of a sign in the back earlier that you pointed out, Positively Steroids. Right. <laughs> so then he's going to come out here and he's going to hit Booker T with a with a guitar. And then that's going to lead to he and Booker T wrestling a little bit later on. So you're saying it all was a work except for the interview by Vince Russo. Yes. So that was just Russo freestyling by himself. Russo quote unquote went into business for himself. And that's the reason Hogan sued. And this show we're watching is pretty monumental. I mean, Booker T was a made man for sure. After this, he already was, but I mean, it was definite here. Right. And Booker T would say, you know, the career he had and the success he enjoyed a large portion of that is owed to Vince Russo because he's not sure that he would have ever become world champion had it not been for Vince Russo. And Dave Penzer actually told me on the DL that he knew that this screw job was happening the day before because he was instructed to call Booker T and tell him what to bring and what to wear and whatever, because this was going to happen. Right. But that was not the plan uh, as far as the, um, the Vince Russo rant, if you will. Okay. Well, I, I, uh, I, I still believe it was all. And I guess it's because I was tainted back then and still am that I, I don't believe anybody. I believe everything to work in wrestling. And, and I know Vince all, often tried, Vince Russo often tried to work the boys and do things that were different so that it would get written up on the sheets or whatever. Where are you at and on I, working the boys? What's that? Where are you at on working the boys? I don't, I don't, uh, I think it's, it's the wrong thing to do. I thought it was the wrong thing to do back then. I, I think I've told you that the fight between uh, Buff Bagwell and Diamond Dallas Page over Kimberly in the back. That everybody said was a was a shoot. Yeah, it was a fucking work. And of course, then it became an angle on TV, right? So I don't, I don't, I don't believe any of this stuff. So I don't, I don't think uh, working the boys back then worked at all. And I guess that's just the old school in me here. Uh, I don't know. But the fans were into Booker T. I don't think there's, well, there goes the wig. The fans were into Booker T. I don't think there was any question behind, by, about that, and, and, and why not? Because uh, he was one of the great ones, man. What do you think about his commentary? I, I know they don't use him that much anymore. I, um, I like Booker T. I think Booker T is one of the more underrated. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Booker T. However... Okay. I don't think that his commentary is nearly as good as his wrestling. Right. Like Corey Graves, I think his commentary is better than his wrestling. All right. T, I think his wrestling is better than his commentary. Okay. Got it. Oh, my God. Canyon could do a lot of shit, man. Chris Canyon was a great performer. And a sad state of affairs, him taking his own life, too. Yeah, that sucks, man. It really does. Let's talk about the, uh, the gate here. Only $127,000 is the total gate here. 25,000 additional dollars, uh, in merchandise. I guess we should mention we're only about two months after the whole David Arquette thing and the nitro before this show that we're watching, it went down on July 3rd, neither Bischoff nor Russo were there says a lot about WCW. Oh, and look at there inside the book that he brought to the ring is a brick he is a brick, a stunt brick. No doubt. Mm-hmm. May have been a shoe brick if nobody's going to get hit with it. Okay. So Russo nor Eric were there. Yep. So I guess as a reminder, Russo 
um, was brought back and they brought back Eric Bischoff to sort of oversee him and be the liaison. Bischoff's dad had just passed away though. So he had been away at a funeral and he was coming back uh, for the show here and he was late to the production meeting and he told everyone specifically, don't start the production meeting without him. And when he got there, of course, Russo had went against his wishes and done it anyway. And allegedly they had been going back and forth all week about what the finish was going to be. Russo wanted one thing. Hogan wanted another. And of course, Hogan didn't show up again. And, and, uh, Eric was pretty much gone too. After this, this is the end of Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan in WCW, this show right here. Right. And it's also, you know, the beginning of Booker T's run. And a lot of people think this is really the end of WCW. Of course it wouldn't go out of business, you know, for another eight months, but a lot of people say, no, this is really it right here. Yeah, well, creatively, probably it is. Realistically, I have a feeling that the decision had already been made to to shit can us a long time ago. I don't know when the I don't know when the talks were with AOL and Time Warner merging, where it lines up on this with this date in two thousand. Uh, but I remember we had a I think we had a thunder at uh, up in Fairfax, Virginia, George Mason University. And uh, Bill Bush and a lot of the guys uh, met with the AOL people. And Bill said it was a good meeting. And I remember thinking, man, I hope AOL likes wrestling, which they didn't. And so I really think that they knew that wrestling was at an end anyway. Right. You know, it, what, what What bothers me so much was when I found out that Eric was coming back, I remember I was in Vancouver doing uh, doing voiceovers for our video games. And I talked to Eric on the phone. And, uh, I was, I told him I was pretty excited about he and Vince coming back together. I thought with Eric and and Vince together, it it would, we would have a pretty good run, but it just all went sour. And I don't know if it went sour because of this night or maybe it was went sour leading up to that. I don't know, but I was really surprised it because I always liked what Russo did. I always, I've talked about this. I liked his organization. I like the fact that he put the thought in it, a process and and really worried about the product and really worked hard with it. And and I thought, you know, Eric was a very good leader and um, it all just went south quickly, quickly. So Eric left after this night. Yep. Never to be seen from again. Did he just say, fuck it? No. I don't want anything to. You know, he uh, by the time they landed. Uh, of course they leave together. Hogan and uh, Bischoff would leave this show together. And by the time they landed, their phone had blown up with people talking about what happened with the uh, Russo promo. Right. Immediately. He started calling Turner executives. Uh, so does Hogan and their attorney. And obviously Hogan's calling his attorney. And it's a real mess after this man. Hogan wound up suing, but nothing really came out of that suit. Well, it depends on who you ask. Okay. Uh, Bischoff contends that Hogan got a settlement from Turner. Okay. Well, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me because they settled with everything with yeah. everybody. Yeah. Wow. I don't think, I mean, I know for sure Vince Russo wasn't found guilty of anything. If that's what we're talking about. Right. I mean, how can you sue somebody based on, on, on a on a wrestling promo? On fiction. Right, on fiction. Absolutely. I just, I, I never did see that. I'll tell well, you what, though. I've heard some promos where I felt like somebody should go to, go to jail for, you know? <laughs> really? Yeah, you've done some on that Halloween Havoc 95 episode. <laughs> really? Yeah, you're talking about Johnny B. Bad and... Okay. What, right. what, what mean gene wanted to do with his bald head? <laughs> okay. What type of juice was going to be dripping <laughs> off of it. Okay. <laughs> I've never reached that plateau again. Have I? <laughs> it's all been downhill since that one, man. No, that's not true. We've had some good episodes. This isn't one of them, but we've, no, it, it's not. And, 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 and listen, I, I, 
I'm, I'm watching this thing uh, this weekend, and I'm thinking, how am I going to take make a positive spin on this without saying fuck a million times? I uh, want to be your candy <laughs> liquor. <laughs> Thank you very much. I just it's just hard to put a, a positive spin on it. And and, and listen, I, I also want to say that I was trying my damnedest, and we as an announce crew were trying our damnedest to to make it seem very good as well. And it was. Just wasn't this wasn't a bad match, but it just wasn't easy to do, man. And, and this is, uh, I, I think, you go back and you, and you, and you've heard what I've said about the end of WCW and how depressed I was and and how upset I was and how much pressure we were on. From this moment on, uh, from this moment on, the last six seven months of WCW were the worst. Were by far the worst for me because now we had uh, Terry Taylor, Kevin Sullivan. Uh, you know, Ed Ferrara, who was, you know, still working and still wanted the job uh, and uh, all in my ear, tell me what to say and and pushing me. And then the the quote unquote creative committee, booking committee would get together and they would think Shivani's not doing his job. We want to replace him. And there was a lot of pushing and tugging on Shivani. And Vince Russo got with me. He said, there's a lot of guys in creative that. uh that don't like your work, but as far as I'm concerned, you'll always do our commentary, uh, which is another reason I like Vince Russo. But uh, it was just uh, this from this moment on, it was a tough time for us. And this is uh, this is the beginning of it, man. And it's hard to point at one thing. I guess you can point at at what happened with Hogan and that interview and the problems with Hogan walking out. But it, it's tough to point to one thing. But I mean, the cumulative. Here we go. Here comes the guitar. Kaboom. And we'll set up their match later on. It's tough to point to one thing, but if you look at this, and hey, it's going to get worse with a graveyard match, right? Yeah. Uh, there, there's just a lot of crazy shit that just that wasn't good. And that sometimes it's not only in the planning, in the booking, sometimes it's in the execution of it. I mean, God bless David Flair. He was kind of lost. He kept, he was in the, well, what the fuck? Match didn't matter anyway. Because the only thing, oh, wow. Wow. Now, that was good. Ouch. One, two, three. Just a time check here as we're going along. We're at 114.55, 6, 7, and Canyon gets his hand raised again. But the only good thing about the show so far is Stacey Keebler's ass. Wouldn't you guys agree? Well, that's the best thing about the show so far. Well, yeah, that's the only good thing about the show. Absolutely. You want to guess what the uh, star rating for this one was in the Ubzub, huh? Uh, two and three quarter stars. Cassia, you got a guess? Uh, whew. Why'd you go two and three quarter? Yeah. All right, let's do this promo here, Tony. All right, Pamela, would you leave me alone? I'm talking to this woman. Uh, listen. Is it true that you married Tony Schiavone? No, I want you to talk to me. Oh, oh man, man, Pamela. Uh, uh, I had a good-looking woman here with me, and you step in front of me, and what in the world? And look at you, man. You got boobs sticking up in the air. I don't want to talk to you. I want to go talk to this woman over here because I'm Mike Awesome. Hey. Yeah. Paul Shock looked good, man. <laughs> you think she's on the Twitter machine? I don't know. Pamela Paul shock. Does she have her private airfield as well. <laughs> she's on the gram. Is she? She's only got uh wow. She's only got 377 followers. Must be pretty regular uh-huh. gram. It is. She's a regular person. Now here's a not regular person. It's all ham cubes himself. All right, baby. He's got right out of the breakfast buffet at the Shoney's in Ackworth. It's our buddy, Scott Steiner. If you're ready to get fucked up at the hot bar, holler <laughs> if you hear me. <laughs> He's got uh, Colonel Sanders on his junk meat. Yep. He's got Asia strutting that ass out here. That's not she Asia. Looked, nah, what was her name? Uh, but anyway, she Mad- looked good. Madasia. Madasia, absolutely was. Look at the girls at ringside, man. Those are plants. You think so? Dude, there's no way... Two chicks that look like that got front row tickets to to, <laughs> not, to a WW or WCW pay per view. Yeah, it, yeah, it was all guys by that time. You know, it, it's funny how the fan base kind of. See, look from at the rest the, of the crowd. 
And you're like, no, they could be legit. No, they're not. Wow. By the way, the Scott Steiner, the epitome of what a professional wrestler looks like right here. I know we <laughs> like to have a lot of fun with all ham cubes, but yeah, the dude looks like what you imagine a pro wrestler looks like right here. And then there's fucking Dave Penzer. He looks like an extra on the Sopranos. He looks like he's got a number on the nets. That's yeah, Joey, that's Joey numbers. The fuck Hugs. look at the, the powder with red hair over here is our referee. <laughs> By the way, uh, what strip club did y'all find Madeja at? I don't know, man. I don't know. By the way, she's the huh. second most roll tied thing on the show. Yeah, I agree. Well, but let me just tell you, I'm so fucking pumped about this one. I know that we have uh, had a lot of fun shitting on stuff, but Mike awesome is a guilty pleasure of mine. He's up there with Sid to me. One of my all time favorites that nobody really talks about, but when he was an ECW dude, he was just a monster. Paul Heyman knew how to position him and I loved him and I'm excited to see his match here with Scott Steiner. Cause I don't remember the last time I saw this. Well, uh, what was it about Mike Awesome? I guess the ECW that why you liked Awesome? You didn't really like what he did here. No, well, what I liked. Check this out, by the way. You got to remember this is a big old tall wow. some bitch too. Just jumping right over into the fans. No, what I liked about Awesome was him just power bombing motherfuckers off the top <laughs> rope through tables and out of the ring to the floor through tables and I mean, he just uh, first of all he would get on the top rope and do whatever. And you could see that he was, you know, doing running leaps over the guardrail. And he's doing that at probably a legit six, 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 seven. So wow. Scott Steiner here. Got a drink here. There's no, there's no unlimited refills at the Shoney's in Ackworth, by the way. <laughs> and you know, they, they, he, we, I think what happened here, if, if I'm right, that when that Scott got tatered on the outside and that kind of just, uh, pissed him off a little bit. So Scott was going at him, and Mike Awesome, buddy, is going at him as well. Coming in hot. Already the best match we've seen. Bop. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it's not funny ha-ha. It's legit ass-kicking, and this is an ECW-style brawling through the crowd match, which I'm sure you hate, Tony, but I love. It adds such an air of unpredictability, and it, it is unpredictable. It's probably also unsafe, but that's what makes it fun as a fan to me. You know, I don't always want to think about what's safe. I want to think about what's fun, and... These guys brawling through the crowd. That's fun stuff. Well, well, why would you say, I know, Tony, it's something that you, you, you hated. Well, that you I, would hate. I figure you probably just want like a deep arm dragon twist. <laughs> See, that's what I thought. Yeah. Just snatch a headlock and sell for like 10 minutes. And then do a fucking spinning toe hold for a yeah, submission. Right. Yeah. And we're out of here. Right. Well, no, you're fucking wrong. Okay. Okay. I liked this. I like this. And I like what they were doing because they... Had they had some sort of semblance of here's a look at that point of that elbow, man. <laughs> I like where he would do the flex the look at his bicep and then put the elbow on. Had some semblance of some type of wrestling. They knew to kick it into high gear because they knew that what had happened before them had not really been that good. By the way, what was the uh, rating of the last match? What was it? Uh, three stars. Three stars. Okay. But you know, I, I still look at this and think, boy, I miss the days of the of the Steiner brothers. I oh, do. How could you not? Yeah. The best tag team ever. Best tag team ever. You know, I know we like to have a lot of fun with old school board and ham cubes, but we've talked about it before. I'm a huge Steiner fan. I got their old Michigan jackets. Yeah. I, I wound up finding that old uh that yellow poster that eluded me all these years. Oh good. That I had as a kid. It was on eBay in Europe somewhere. One of our listeners sent it to me a couple of months back and uh, I f they sent it to me when I was out to dinner and I just clicked the buy it now button right then. So I've got that. And one day I'll get around to getting it on a wall somewhere. Well, the fact is that, uh, you know, we've been having a lot of fun with Scott Steiner. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun with Rick Steiner, you know, school board ham cubes. We understand, but here's another fact in all that. I'm on the fucking front line with this because on October 20th in Waynesboro, Virginia, at Waynesboro High School, I'm going to be there signing autographs. And so is Scott Steiner. Oh, man. I hope you have fun with that. Yeah. So he'll come up to me and he'll say, what's going on? And I'll say, hey, buddy, how you doing? 
and he'll say, well, what's this talk going on? I said, oh, it's that motherfucking Conrad Thompson. I'll be motherfucking you that day, buddy. <laughs> I'll be backpedaling and motherfucking. He tried to fold a chair that doesn't fall. But you realize that that'll be in October. Yeah. Well, I would have already seen him by then. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I feel like it's worth mentioning that when you're doing that, I'll be in Boston with uh, Bruce Bertard. Yeah, how about that? I, <laughs> see, you guys are the WWF and I'm WCW. You get booked in Boston and I got the high school gym in Waynesboro, Virginia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was legit, was it not, Cassio? <laughs> was a shot. Oh, God. I, uh, the rumor in innuendo mm. is that Mike Awesome is barely related to Hulk Hogan. I that? never heard that. You never heard that? No. How would being barely related to someone go? Third cousin? <laughs> Why are you being a smart ass right now? Well, I don't know. It's just <laughs> <laughs> barely. Okay. Well, I know I barely got a dick, and I know what that means. Okay. okay. Well. Okay. Well. But what was barely being, went so what's right. the, what's the story about him being related to Hulk Hogan? Where's that from? Barely. Well, in my head, he's, <laughs> oh, he, he's the cousin <laughs> of Hulk Hogan's nephew. <laughs> what? The cousin of Hulk Hogan's. Okay, that's barely being related, I guess. The cousin. It's not enough to get you uh, to get you in at the family reunion, I don't think. But it would be, you know. You know, he was a uh, real estate agent in Tampa. Hulk Hogan was a real estate agent in Tampa? No. Mike Awesome was. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just right. saying, I wonder if he sold Hulk some of his properties. Uh, maybe so. <laughs> Mike Awesome, real estate agent in Tampa. He is. Uh, you know, Dave Penzer is a real estate agent. Yes, I wouldn't buy shit from him. Why? <laughs> I just wouldn't. Good God. Here come, here come the cat. Here come Ernest Miller. What's he going to do? Oh, I know what he's going to do. Help me understand. Why wouldn't you buy anything from Dave Penzer? Well, I just wouldn't. I just have some, I, I, why would I buy anybody that, that I worked with? I, I, I just wouldn't back in the day. I mean, I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't buy, uh, let's say a tennis shoes from Ernest Miller. Would you buy a mortgage from Conrad Thompson? Yes, I would see, but yeah, I, I, probably wouldn't buy a big boy sandwich from scott steiner well because you should get the ham cubes i mean everybody knows that <laughs> that's that's hey, right hypothetically speaking would you yeah. buy would you buy a home from cassio kid no are you are you a real estate guy cassio i am are you really yeah radio ain't paying much shit is it <laughs> Hey, listen, I got all you motherfuckers doing 19 other hustles. You know what? I'm sitting in the background of this for free. What do you think? <laughs> I'll send you some money. You got a, you got a <laughs> PayPal account? Okay. slam by Mike Awesome, and he rolls him up. What a fucking okay. awesome Watching dude. Mike Awesome, Ham Cubes, and Gary Sheffield right here watching him from the outside <laughs> for free. Yeah. He looks like Demolition Man in Paris. Okay. Send me your uh, PayPal thing, and I'll send you a couple of dollars. <laughs> You fucking tight it's, ass it's motherfucker. Send me it's, a Tommy Young shirt. It's candy licka at, <laughs> at, at gmail.com. I want to be at candy com. Okay. Here, I know what's going to happen here. Ernest Miller is going to disqualify Scott Steiner, isn't he, for the Steiner recliner? Is that what's going to happen here? Because he outlawed it, didn't he? Well, thanks for the spoiler. Spoiler. All right. Thank you. Well, spoiler alert. This motherfucking happened 18 years ago, guys. <laughs> well, we're just not getting around to watching it. It's not, it's not like we're watching Avengers 3 or Avengers 4. I'm from or... Gadsden, Alabama. I didn't have pay-per-view money back then. <laughs> and apparently you don't have much <laughs> now. I'm having, just like then, I'm having to watch it at a friend's house. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good line right there. <laughs> uh, oh, man. oh, he kicked the wrong guy. Fuck. And here you go, buddy. German uh -oh. release suplex. There you go. <sighs> One, two, three. Two count. No, he was on the ropes anyway. Did you like when you remember when they uh, put Mike Awesome in? The, of course, everybody was screaming mullet, mullet, mullet. Then they put him in a leisure suit. Remember that? Yep. 
I, I didn't care much for that. I but. Mean, you saw him in the back talking to the heavy set lady too. They were making him the fat chick thriller. Ah, nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> Not that I am like that or anything. Did you ever go through a leisure suit phase, Tony? Yes, I did. I, I as a matter of fact, I have two of them. Two. I have a, a powder blue and a brown one. You said have like you currently still do. I think I still have those. Do I still have my leisure suits, Lois? Do you know? No, but I had a leisure suit before I met you in the 70s. I didn't come with them. Okay. She said I didn't come with them when I came from Virginia. But I had two of them. I did in the 70s. Hmm. Leisure suits. See you guys. You guys didn't experience the seventies. You guys are kids. You don't know what the seventies were like. They were they were wonderful. I experienced the uh, wonderful PC game Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> are you in the loop on Leisure Suit Larry? Uh, yeah, somewhat. Really? I yeah. didn't. I didn't expect that. I would have never guessed that you knew about yeah. that. He was the original candy liquor <laughs> on the PC, of course. Oh God. This guy a little blown up here. You think? Yep. <laughs> I mean. Yes, Sarah, baby. Madasia. All right. Go ahead, Cassio. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the hat is still here. You will not <laughs> believe it. I've got this. Now I've got a huge wardrobe working. I've got this Hawaiian shirt on now. I will never have to wear a leisure suit again. You guys. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I don't have any eight tracks. Do you have any eight tracks, Morton? Uh, well, uh, I don't know what eight tracks are, but at least I uh, do have a red top on, and I have no idea. You don't either, Madden. I uh, have no idea what this white hat is doing here. I don't even know who you are. I thought your name was Scott <laughs> Hudson, but Cassio just <laughs> called you Morton. So if this is Morton's Steakhouse, <laughs> I'll have it rare with a side of taters. Can you do that? And I, I might sop it up a little Medasia. I've had Medasia chicken before one time. Actually, that's why I had to get rid of the brown leisure suit. I got Medasia sauce all over the front of it, folks. Luckily, now we've got this can, guy coming. Can you fucking believe what we're watching right now? Oh, my God. This is real life, man. This, <laughs> look at Charles Robinson. This is the guy who was in the ring when Shawn Michaels wrestled his last match. Have a flashlight? When Edge wrestled his last match. When Ric Flair wrestled his last match. When Goldberg got- won the world title. <laughs> and now he's carrying a jack off dressed up in kiss paint. It's through a graveyard. It's Tarzan with a, Sting. With a torch. Call the fire rise. Dun 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 because he sets my soul on fire. Call the firehouse, dun, 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 and the flames keep burning higher. Ooh. Call the fire. You guys don't like Kiss, do you? Are you no. Kiss fans? Okay. No. I don't think- <laughs> <laughs> you heard that, huh? Caution okay. tape around the hole. I was bad for loving you, baby. What the fuck is happening? Singing God Kiss. of Thunder and Rock and Roll. Whoa. So he's on a scavenger hunt in the middle of a pay-per-view. <laughs> That's right. And you know what? You know, this was pre-taped in Georgia. And you know why we know it wasn't pre-taped in Florida? Why's that? Because when they go in the water, they're going to get eaten by gators if they're in Florida <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the night. <laughs> Let me show you why I did it. <laughs> mm. Oh, boy. I love how he's still got the flashlight on him. That's his gig. Yeah, I know. That's right. Well, he's got to be able to see. That would be, uh, 
Vampiro kidnapped Asia. <laughs> Asia was laying dead, and Vampiro came out of a casket to spit stuff in Demon's eyes. <laughs> Finally, Vampiro hit Demon with one of those breakable tombstones, an actual headstone, not a pile driver, <laughs> and put him in a casket, threw him in a grave, and lit it on fucking fire! <laughs> Negative two stars. Yeah. Is this the worst were, wrestling show of all time? <laughs> they were fighting in the water like a bunch of kids. Like, get away from me! Get away from me! God bless America. And I was calling this shit, and I tried... Oh, my God. You know what? Dale Torborg's still a very good friend, and I still talk to him uh, because he's, he works in baseball now, believe it or not. Oh, is that fucking baseball? Yeah, he's, uh, he's the... Uh, with the Chicago White Sox, he is their uh, head strength and conditioning coach of their minor leagues. What? So I see him a lot. And his dad was uh, Jeff Torborg, who was a, a big-time catcher in baseball at one time. He caught uh, Sandy Koufax's perfect game, did Jeff Torborg. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so I, I, I still talk to him. And uh, he and I were, you know, big kiss guys back then and. And, you know, he was a good guy. Dale was one of my favorite guys. He he had, I don't know if, if you've ever seen this or not, but we had this thing where uh, we had him in a pod. And they played uh, God of Thunder. That was his theme music that Kiss actually let us use, his, uh, the God of Thunder uh, theme music. And we played God of Thunder, and he was supposed to come out of the pod with smoke and everything, and the pod never opened. I hate it when the pods. Oh don't no! Open. It oh did, no! It, and it was like it was like uh, Spinal Tap all over again. You know that scene in Spinal Tap? It was just like the scene in Spinal Tap, and he was stuck in the pod. <laughs> and they finally had to had the guys had to come out and pry the pod open so he would come out and have the entrance to his his match. I know that's got to be out there somewhere. Oh, here we uh, go. Here's the tombstone. Oh shit, man! He hit him with a tombstone. Flashlight yeah. still going. <laughs> well, he's got to see to make the three count, right? You think that was a uh, uh, just a standard ref outfit, or did Charles have to bring in like a swimming? Yeah, that was a uh, that was a swimming ref's outfit. They are available <laughs> at boxofgimmicks.com. Get your swimming ref's outfit, so you can jump you can jump in the ocean and look like a referee. Uh-oh. No, he's not. He's oh, not. Oh, man. Fuck. Throw him in a hole. Throw him in a hole. And there's Throw him in a hole. There's police tape up. How about that? Oh. And then he set him on far. Flashlight. <laughs> Charles, what? 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 What are you doing? What? What's funny is Charles's hair got wet and it changed colors. <laughs> <laughs> it did, didn't it? <laughs> So did the river. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, All right. All right. Well, what I'd like to know is what the hell you're doing here when you could have been back at ECW with someone like Francine. For God's sake, tell me, Shane Douglas, why in the world would you get messed up in a clusterfuck promotion like this? Because I'm here for Dick Flair. Cut the <laughs> fucking music. I can't do a promo without the F word. That's not what I do. But I do come into a promotion right when it's about to go fucking belly up. You see, when I made my way to the WWF, they were drawing houses and gyms. That's right. They went from the Silver Dome, 87,000 people, down to high school gyms. And it was me. It was Dean Douglas that ruined the fucking town. And then I went to ECW. And as soon as I got there, they were on pay-per-view. But in no time, my checks were bouncing like Francine's well, you know. But now, I'm here in WCW. And I was here before, but I was here when Watts was here. And you know how that went. And I'm here to finish it off. I'm killing the promotion. Damn. Hey, if you want to kill your promotion, you also book Goldberg. That's right. Be Goldberg's guest manager at ringside. That's WCW Bash of the Beach, P.O. Box 540175, Opelika, Florida. And if you're lucky, he'll hurt you, too, as his guest manager at ringside. All entries must be in by September 25th, 2000, because we're not so sure we're going to be in business for the next two months. 
So here's Buff Bagwell as a baby face. Hey, by the way, I got bad news. We need to talk about this. Oh no. It's official. Uh, we got to get our shit together. We do. Buff Bagwell's coming to Starcast. Wow. And odds are pretty good that he yeah. knows about what all you've been saying. Oh, and what all you've been doing. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. I mean, he knows that you're trying to move in on his enterprise, that you've got that profile up there competing with yeah. his now at right. Cowboys, the number four angels.com. Yeah. Does he know that you're the one that came out and talked about his mother shaving his nuts now? Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now you talked about that last week. You referred to it as a coin purse and you no, talked you about pulling them tight. <laughs> No, uh, uh-uh, uh, uh-uh. you started. Yeah. Hey, listen, you started this shit here. <laughs> Not me. Okay. By the way, Shane Douglas, uh, here's some breaking news who was advertised for Starcast, No longer coming to Starcast. Oh, uh, did you get him pissed off too? He heard our promo mm-hmm. and said, fuck. No, really. I wanted to make sure there was a second Starcast, So I didn't invite him to the first one. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, if, I, I, if only I, there was a way I could eat breakfast sometime with Buff Bagwell. Actually, you yeah, can but- at Starcast.com. <laughs> can you believe well, that? It- By the way, you know your your shit sold out so fast, record time. I was trying to find a way to get another dinner in there with Tony Schiavone, and I was thinking maybe since the first one was so successful, we should just have a vein of sausage <laughs> fest. <laughs> Okay, what are you trying to infer? Well, there? I'm saying it's going to be more guys than girls there, so we can call it a sausage fest. Uh-huh. Since you're well, there, and we're trying to do it on a budget, because I've blown the budget now that I've booked Buff Bagwell. Because, you know, I don't know <laughs> if you saw, but no, you go to Cowboys, the number four, angels.com, and you'll see his hourly rate is not cheap. He's there for four days. I'm going to have to refinance just in order to get him in there. <laughs> well... What website do they need to go refinance? There's no ads on Patron. Oh. Can't do ads here. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, they know. They know it's Savecade, you know. Lucky Big Hall sold out before I get it, so I don't know that. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun at uh, StarCast, aren't we? Well, I mean, I am. If Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I, yeah, I don't get my do the shit beat out of me beforehand. Fuck. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to. You, you know what? I, I want to I want to rewind back to January first, twenty seventeen. Okay. Okay. My life was I was broke, but my life was easy. <laughs> Nobody was mad at me. My wife loved me. There was no wrestler wanting to kick my ass. Well, there were wrestlers wanting to kick your ass. You just didn't know which one. Okay. And I was just doing baseball and football and basketball, and I was happy, and. Now here we are in the middle of July, first part of July of 2018, and thanks to Conrad Thompson, I'm making money, but I may not be alive to enjoy it in the next couple of months. <sighs> well, such is my life. You guys, you guys can talk any time here. I was, oh, no. I was riveted by this match. Uh, <laughs> try. Oh, look, there's oh, cake. There's they, cake. They, all they did was flip the fucking <laughs> pads <laughs> over it. They flip it over and, and say, oh, wait, there's the cake. The, the, <laughs> slap dicks, cake. the slap dicks were out there trying to clean it up before somebody was a husband and said, here's what you do. Now, if you accidentally shit on the couch cushion before your wife gets home, you just flip that some bitch over. Shit on the couch <laughs> Yeah, listen, you're laughing, but <laughs> you have shit on that couch before. No, I have not. You, yes, I've you, shit, I, sh- I shit on the floor in my bedroom, but I've never shit on the couch. Want to be your couch shit up. <laughs> hey, Lois, yeah, she walked out on that one, man. Well, yeah, I she heard us talking about too. me shitting on the floor, and she left. Didn't I shit on the floor? Yeah, and on the bed, okay. On the bed? Yeah, well, you, look, hey, you, let me tell you, let me tell you two fucking millennials something. You're going to get old one day, okay? I ain't going to be around to see it, but you're going to get old, and I hope you shit the bed, too. I hope you laugh so hard that you shit your pants one day like I've done, okay? It's going to happen to both of you. Yeah, but you're also the guy that 
said you had never had a constipation problem. Yep, you did say that. We talked about that on the radio. Yeah, I, I've never, school. I've never had a constipation problem. That's never. a lie. I just, I don't know. I've always been very regular. <laughs> I'm a, a regular guy. Too regular if you're going on the bed. <laughs> just um, never had a constipation problem. Why are we talking about my shitting habits? <laughs> Why did this this, this whole conversation morph shit. into that? What in the fuck is going on with my life? Well, we're talking about a Buff Bagwell match. Okay, good. Oh, you know what? I agree what? with you. We probably should move on and not talk about your bowel movements. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, and uh, the one thing that, that concerns me is that Buff Bagwell and, and Shane Douglas when are close to When I start making love, mm. I don't just make love. I be stroking. That's what I be doing. I be stroking. Come on. That's what I be doing. I stroke it to the east, and I stroke it to the west. And I, stroke it I mean, it's fitting we're playing back. this during I Buff Bagwell. I be stroking. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, they're coming over near us. Wait a minute. Dip down the song. Watch out. Ah, oh, shit. I thought they were good. Glad that didn't happen. We need to change this song to I Be Shitting <laughs> and ask you how regular you are. I Be Shitting. Well, great. I Be Shitting long. Have you ever made Soft. shit just before breakfast, Tony? <laughs> I be shitting to the left. I be shitting to the right. I'm going to use Conrad's bidet tonight. I be shitting. <laughs> shitting. <laughs> have you ever made shit while you watch the Late Late Show, Tony? <laughs> yes, I have. Have you ever <laughs> shit on the backseat of a car? I was going to say, have you ever made shit on a couch? But you said no on that. <laughs> no. Never shit on the couch. Shit loud on me and I said, I've been shitting. <laughs> That's what I've been, been doing. doing. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! And let's I bring out, some, let's bring out some more boobs. And Klondike yeah. would watch it if I shit on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he would. <laughs> Let me ask uh, you something. How long has it been since you made shit? Made shit? <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, make shit well, yesterday? Well, you know what's great is she's gonna holler his name in a minute. Yes. Tony Shivani, Tony Shivani, Tony Shivani. Here we go. Made shit, Tony Shivani. Did you make love last year? Did you make shit last year, Tony? Or maybe Look at Tori Wilson. That you planning on making love? Yeah, she looks pretty live here, man. But she just remember live when you start making, making love, shit. You make it hard, long, soft, soft short, short, and be stroking. <laughs> be shit. I be stroking. <laughs> Tell me, Shivani, this is your life. And I stroke it to the west. And I stroke it on the woman that I love the best. Whoa, man. So that's our 19th nut shot. Yes, it is. But nobody. But they're shaved, so it doesn't hurt. <laughs> that's or does right. It, make it doesn't it hurt. hurt it probably hurts more. More hurts there's, more. There's yeah, no, no hair buffer. To and I can always tell when she gets satisfied. Oh, we're selling the face here. What the fuck? Here we go. If you were shooting right here, you, you'd be getting other shots. Clans caught her. Clans caught her. Clans caught her. Oh shit! Clans caught her. <laughs> the best part of the song oh got it got it oh lord it's a, ah look at tori i mean what, oh, what what's going on <laughs> she is all the way live yes she is man thank goodness my wife big booty judy does not have patreon yes lordy uh you know and not only that uh i i, I every time i look at tori wilson i'm thinking Fucking Billy Kidman. I know. Jesus Christ. And there's the one, two, three. I, I just, I just don't, uh, I just don't get it, man. Billy Kidman and Tori Wilson. Man, that's, I don't know what to say right now. I, I don't either, but Betty, she is all the way live. 
Is that like your go-to tonight? <laughs> I'm taking it too. <laughs> I like it. She is all the way. Well. Okay, just so you know, Cassio, that's uh, 149.24. Is that where that is? That's where that is. I Whoa. Go back and check that out. Oh, man. I think that jumped up to number one on the <laughs> bash at the beach. Yeah, I think it did too. Let me let me say this. Uh, you know, in ECW, as you know, Shane Douglas was seconded by Francine. Right. If you had to pick here, who do you think did a better job for old Mr. Douglas? Tori Wilson or Francine? Francine. Well, how about this, brother? Here he is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But first, we got all slap dick number one. Go ahead. All right, Jeff, we understand it could be some big fucking swerve coming out tonight. I don't know what's going on. Tell us about oh, it. Oh, let me tell you all about it. First of all, Mean Gene, I'm going to get out here and I'm going to screw this company the same way I did the last one. You see, Vince McMahon thought I was going to lay down for a lady in a housekeeping match. Whoa, jokes on him. I'm coming down here with his boy, Vince Russo. I've conned him into giving me this fake big gold belt. I'm about to go out here and screw the biggest star of them all and then get blackballed from the business completely. Just watch, Uh, Gene. All right. We're getting ready to fuck the business over. Our last great pay-per-view. Well, it wasn't this one. Let's go to the ring. No, actually, we're going to go to the vignette. Mm. mm. Wow. Mm is right. Power bombing Hogan or jackknifing Hogan on the table. Check out these girls, would you? Oh. <laughs> Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plain, and the waving wheat can sure smell sweet when the wind comes right behind the rain. rain. Michael Buffer. Old Judd is dead. Uh, Cassia, <laughs> do you want to do the introductions Old here? Old Judd Fry is dead. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were doing Oklahoma. That's right. I can't say it. Y'all don't have enough money to pay him the royalties, it's, do you? <laughs> it's summer and we're running <laughs> out of ice. The Surrey with the fringe on top. <laughs> what the fuck are y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Michael Buffer. I'm making more money than anybody else. Woo. Check her out inside. Is that the. Slut slap nut. What? What'd you say? Excuse I me? don't know. You don't even know that lady. <laughs> you're, you're gonna have to calm that down now. Good <laughs> okay. gracious, that's somebody's mom. We're gonna take <laughs> so much of that now. I came to see Hogan kick Jared's slap ass. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for the ten thousandth time, and because I'm gonna make fifty thousand dollars tonight, let's get ready to fuck up the company. <laughs> All right, here it is. One of the most famous moments, don't you think, in WCW? No doubt ever? about it. Arguably yep. the most controversial, too. Yep. We should mention Shane Douglas and Buff Bagwell wrestling to a, wrestled to a two-star match there. Mm-hmm. And here comes the story of 2000, probably. The fallout from this would be incredible. You know, the, the biggest star in the history of the business, the guy who turned WCW around and got him profitable for the very first time, Hulk Hogan. Also the same guy who turned the business around and upside down with the NWO and is probably as responsible as anybody for the resurgence of the, of professional wrestling with the Monday night wars and the NWO Hulk Hogan, he's out. This is it. And we're not going to see him for years involved in wrestling before he comes back to the WWF with the NWO. Of course that would happen in 2002. But first, we've got the new champion, the savior that Vince Russo was looking for. The chosen one is the way he referred to himself. What did you think of Jeff Jarrett coming in with such a big push? Of course, he had been here with WCW going back to 1996 with uh, the, the Strutton. And he was a hokey pokey horseman there for a little while. He winds up going back over to the WWF and manages to get himself into a variety of different programs there. Here comes Vince Russo, bro. 
But when, when, when he comes in though, he comes in fresh off of walking out on Vince McMahon and he gets a tremendous push here from Vince Russo. What'd you think about Jeff Jarrett? It's not just a top guy, but the top guy. Uh, I didn't mind it at all. I, I didn't. I, I thought he could work and he could talk. And uh, so I didn't have a problem with it at all. I, I, looking back on this, it's almost surreal when you think about it that I was, you know, I was here when this happened. And I, at this time, you know, I, I went about my business as if, you know, everything is okay. And I went about my business as we're just trying to put over whatever you put out here. But now that I look back at it, I'm thinking this was the, uh, this was the linchpin. This was the beginning of, uh, of our spiral downward. And it's almost, I don't think it's the beginning. I think this is you circling the drain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, you're right. But I, I think, uh, I mean, I, I, I guess a lot of people think that the beginning of it is when we, uh, smarten everybody up that uh, Mick Foley was going to win the world heavyweight title. I don't know. You can point to many different things, but this is a, one of the big moments heading to us going down the drain. What's and I, I didn't know what to expect here. I, I did not know what to expect. We weren't told what was going to happen. What's sort of weird to think about too, is he's going around and posing on all four sides. He's got a pyro treatment. I mean, they're doing, they're doing everything. Like it's a real legit match. Right. And now here comes Hulk Hogan, of course, Hollywood right. Hogan. He's in the black and white. And this, I guess it's worth mentioning. He had tried a few different incarnations here. He went, of course, from the good guy, red and yellow, then to the heel NWO with black and white. And then he backed off of that for a little bit in 99 and went back in red and yellow. But when that started to uh, fall off again, he's back to what worked most recently Hollywood Hogan. And I got to tell you when he went back to the red and yellow, it was good for me for a nostalgia pop for a couple of weeks. But after that, I wanted this version back. Yeah. And, and that was just us trying things because things were kind of moving downhill, trying different things. To, why don't we try bringing Hulk Hogan back as Hulk Hogan was, but yeah, this is the, uh, this is the Hulk Hogan that really worked for me too. And, uh, again, a lot of Hogan fans here, uh, again, I'm, I'm going to rep uh, uh, repeat. I didn't know what was going on here. And, uh, yeah, that's what's funny is, you know, we talked about this on Bischoff's podcast that they had not smartened up anybody. They wanted everybody to just call it like it was a shoot. Right. And what we're about to see here was agreed upon earlier in the day by Vince Russo and Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff. And Russo, or uh, Bischoff rather, is not sure what Jarrett knew or didn't know or knew or didn't know. Uh huh. So wait a minute. Jared was not smartened up to this either. No, I think Jared knew that this was the plan here, but he's not sure if he knew that Russo was going to come out and do the promo after. Right. He, he believes that it was probably a situation where Russo was trying to play both sides against the middle. Huh? By the way, Jeff Jarrett here for what it's worth. I fucking hated. You, I th I th really? I thought Jeff Jarrett here being the world champion was a joke. I thought Jeff Jarrett being the world champion here would be akin to Val Venus being the world champion. Like Val Venus was a mid card guy that no offense whatsoever. I was very entertained by Val Venus and Jeff Jarrett did his job because I hated Jeff Jarrett. Right. It took me being an adult and separating myself from this, you know, to really smarten up and say, oh, well, fuck. Uh, he did his job. I was supposed to hate him. Right, And, I, and I, I just didn't feel like he belonged in this spot to me. When you talked about guys like Bret Hart and Hulk Hogan and Goldberg and Kevin Nash and Sting and Ric Flair and even DDP, they're in a different level than where Jeff Jarrett is to me. And I just didn't buy him in this spot. Now, years later, having learned more about his story and more of an understanding of wrestling, I guess we'd say. And then most of all, just having an opportunity to meet Jeff. I totally get it. And I understand why he was the guy Russo thought he could count on, but look at this shit. The bell rings and 
Russo gets up on the apron and push points at him and says, there it is. Cover him. He's going to show him the copy of the big gold belt, not the original big gold belt. You can tell it's all gold. It's not dual plated. And the leather has been redone by Andre Freitas at AFX studios. He also did the casting and the plating. And well, Hogan, Hogan uh, did a great, I mean, it just, uh, Hogan and everybody's so stunned. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows what's going on. So why? Okay. So he's asking for a microphone here and he gets his microphone in and he says something that, that I think it's, it's actually pretty cool when he says, that's why this company is on its ass because of bullshit shit that you pull like yeah. this. That's right. That's and is that, is that the damn what shape it's in because of the bullshit like this? Right. Is that what caused Vince to come out and do the promo later? No. Because he wanted to have the last say? Allegedly, Vince was, this is from Bischoff's perspective. Okay. Allegedly, Bischoff, uh, or Russo rather, was upset that he felt like his power had sort of been, he had sort of been outranked and overruled by Bischoff. He felt like he should just be able to, you know, do his thing without supervision. And obviously Turner executives wanted Bischoff in control because they had made money with Bischoff. So the final decision always had to be approved by Bischoff. So they went back and forth and they wanted to leave Hulk lay in here and Hogan wanted to win the belt here and it be disputed. And they were okay with this finish with the idea being there would be some sort of a tournament and Hogan would come back and face whoever the winner was at Halloween havoc. So you'd have August and September to get through a tournament and a new champion. And then you would build towards the new champion who won the tournament versus Hogan, who never officially lost after this. And that right. would be your Halloween havoc match. That was the plan. Well, that sounds pretty good to me. But instead, Russo is going to come out and go into business for himself and wrestling will change for good. And by the way, let me just say bash at the beach with you guys in Hawaiian shirts. I understand it's a themed show, but you guys are like a bunch of fucking jack offs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know why that is? Cause you are, we are a bunch of fucking jack offs. Absolutely. And here, here's one of the great shots of the night, right? Vampiro coming it's in wet. from the. And he just walks by Hulk Hogan, who's leaving the building with the kids. See ya. <laughs> it's like, that just happened. This big angle just happened. And we just <laughs> shoot Hulk Hogan walking out. Now, in fairness, that was by design. Bischoff revealed that there was a, that was planned. That shot was only there just so you could see Hogan leaving the building. Wow. Tell Lois to get on a fucking microphone. We got Cassio. What does it matter? The more the merrier. Uh, okay. Uh, She's bringing you your anus sausages. You know, it's a diet Coke with lime. If oh. you don't mind. Thank you very much. Lime and ginger. Oh, I really wish uh, I had. Um... Is that for you? Yes, I do. If you don't mind. I'm doing a show. I got Cassio on here with us, Hi, too. Cassio. Hey, Lois. This is where we are, boys and girls. Lois yeah, that's, that's true. This uh this says this says jump the fucking shark. Okay. <laughs> About eighteen months ago. Okay. Stop well, bitching and get stop bitching and get the drink, lady. We didn't jump it. We tell her to we, clean up the, the fucking dog trip. hair. Mm. All right. This is the this is the end of the uh, this is the end of the vampiro. Uh, Thank God. <laughs> and he walked all the way back from the graveyard. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to be winded just from the walk. I know. Wet. Hmm. Thank you, sweetheart. Probably I got, love you. We got leeches in his suit, like it's stand by me. There we go. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> I am nice to you. Splitting some of this money with you, I'm making. <laughs> okay. Not giving Cassio any. Give you some. <laughs> Give her some what? <laughs> give her some sugar. I said give you some and Conrad said give her some of what <laughs> tell her D's nuts see what she says mm-hmm. ask her if she knows about D's nuts do you know about D's nuts what about D's nuts <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a no. <laughs> Say, uh, no. say, I know you found, you know, you had a, a box of eight tracks, but have you, have you seen these, these? <laughs> Casio, it's easy for you to set where you're setting and feed me lines. I'm uh, again, I'm on the front line. I'm on the front line with Scott Steiner. I'm on the front line with Buff Bagwell. And I'm on the front line with Lois Shivani. So sit over there and shut the fuck up, man. Say, I know you love eight tracks. You love CDs. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love eight tracks. Do you love CDs? Yeah, I too. <laughs> oh, she, she, she got that one. Okay. And here comes these guys. These guys. Did uh, did we ever find out that this was supposed to be Sting in the Box? Not Jack in the Box, Sting in the Box. <laughs> but <laughs> it comes but, Sting in a Box. <laughs> But we, we never did really uh, – it, it, I don't even know if it really was Sting or not because they had a mask on instead of just being Sting with face paint, right? You, Conrad, are you awake? Hello. Hello. I'm here. Okay. Who would fill in for Sting if that was not him? Well, it could have been anybody. I mean, it could have been any of the jack-offs in the back. Hey, there's jack-off in the box and jack-off in the back. Let me mention here that um, when we've got all these guys in sting masks, one of these guys who's going to step out and do some violence here, mm. they're all pointing the bats. Right. Who is this guy? This is Chris. The guy swinging right now is Chris Harris, who at this time was just a local Nashville wrestler. But he would go on to be a TNA wrestler. He would tag team with James Storm as a part of America's Most Wanted. And he had the briefest of brief runs uh, with the WWE as uh, Braden Walker. So he did go on to have a future in the business and he started out as a fake sting. Who do know? And there's the shot we wanted Vampiro in the coffin. And it's all over. Still wet. Now you've seen some Lucha Underground with Vampiro. What do you think? As an announcer, I thought he did. I thought he did fine. Would you prefer him as an announcer or him as a wrestler? Uh, I would probably. That's a tough one. I would probably prefer him as a wrestler, with the exception of this crazy ass thing here. I liked a lot of the stuff that Vampiro did. It's so such a stupid shot. Yeah, it is. It's 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 long. It's it's not doing anything for anybody in the house. The the fans have to be shitting on this. And now, Bill Goldberg, we do understand that you have hurt plenty of people in your life, and we do understand that if Conrad Thompson keeps this shit up, you're going to hurt him as well. You're going to go right to Huntsville, Alabama. I see it in your pocket right there. You have the direction to his house, Huntsville, Alabama. You're going to look his ass up. I'm in the Hall of Fame. Would you get the goddamn gum out of your mouth? I'm in the Hall of Fame. You see this? This is a refinance for First Family. You know what? I could sp- I spirit tackle my house payments. I'm in the Hall of Fame. I played for the Atlanta fucking Falcons, Mean Gene. I'm going to walk out here, spear tackle somebody in 13 seconds. Go home. By the way, how's that kidney treating you? Doing good? Is this a bull whip around my neck? (laughs) Good God, please. Keep the gum in your mouth if you're going to chew it. Fuck. <laughs> right, here it is. Uh oh. Here's the moment. It's fitting to, he's wearing a Bonds baseball jersey because he was a polarizing figure as well. Yes, he was. Or, and of course, uh, ben, Vince Russo is a big time baseball fan and a big time San Francisco Giants fan as a shoot. Uh, and. So now he's going to go into business for himself. And I, I think I counted. I was, I was doing this on our, uh, our video that we did on Patreon when we 
you know, we look at it together and we prep it, prep the show. I think he said the word shit like seven or eight times here. And he said the word shit like five times. And I guess this is the like, you know, the the wow factor or the uh, the one that that makes the things that makes you think this is not on the up and up. But but again, now, so I didn't know this was coming, obviously. And now you're telling me that Bischoff and Hogan didn't know it was coming. And this Bischoff walks out after this happens or did he, he walked out with Hogan, didn't he? When they left, right? Conrad. Yeah. He, he walked out with him at the exact same time. They jump on the plane together. It's Hogan's plane and they fly from Daytona here to Hogan's home. And in the meantime, you've got Vince Russo going into business for himself here. And Bischoff would allege that he was, you know, going completely off script and going into business for himself, as they say in wrestling. Did you find Russo to be overly sensitive to about his ideas or whatever? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I think so. And I, and I think he was overly sensitive about his ideas because he believed in what he he believed in it and his stuff. And he and he put a lot of time and effort into it. Look. Yeah, I, I I I was in my meetings with him and him and Terry Taylor and Ed Ferrara and whomever I guess uh, Disco Inferno one time, and I would go into one of those meetings that they would be racking their brains about you know what to do and what to book and how to book it and who would do this and who would not do that and I just wanted to go, I would just wanted to take a like a, a spoon and stick it up my ass. Because I thought it would make me feel a lot better than having to sit in there with those guys. Uh, I just uh, it was it was just a it was just a no win high pressure work all the time situation. I compare it to what you hear now from college football NFL coaches to where that's all they do that consumes their lives. It, it takes the place of their families. It takes the place of doing anything else. Just coaching the football team is all they do. And for Vince Russo, that's all he was doing. And he was and he was really sure he was very sensitive to it. And I can understand why. It's a tough time in WCW, man, because you know, everybody thinks they've got a solution of how to fix it. And that's right. Yeah. I don't think that anybody outside of Vince Russo thought that this was the way to fix it. Like the fans aren't popping for this. Like they're right. all just looking confused. Because the fans, the fans realize exactly what we now find out. It is him going in, in the business for himself. But, but again, Vince tried to, to do, to do the shock factor. Uh, and that's w what all he was doing. And, you know, it wasn't working as well for him here as it was in the WWF. So he was just trying different things, but I don't know. I look back on this and, huh, it, it's really tough to watch. It, it's tough to watch it here with, with, and of course we're not listening to what he says. And, uh, I did listen to what he said earlier in the week, but it's just, it's just really a tough thing to watch. It is. Tell me what, what's going through your mind right here back in 2000. Are you, are you legit confused? What's yes. happening? I'm legit confused. And I remember, I remember saying, because we did have talkbacks. I remember saying to Craig or whomever, maybe Keith Mitchell, I don't know. One of the guys in the back, I remember saying, guys, you need to, you need to lead me through this. You need to tell me what you want me to say. How you want me to sell this? How do you want me to position this? Because that's what we do try to do, and no one answered me. Just radio silence. Yep. So uh, again, I, I guess they're thinking either they're thinking, I don't know what to tell him, or <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's I don't know what to tell him, but or let him try to figure out on his own and let's see how he reacts to it. So yeah, it was radio silence and. And so uh, I don't know. It's not a happy time. <laughs> does, does the radio silence piss you off, or you, does it leave you more confused? No, well, it it, it pissed me off. It, it pissed me off because I I always wanted to do the right thing, mm -hmm. 
And uh, listen, I, I've talked about the fact that I have too many people in my ear at one time. Uh, and uh, that pissed me off, too, when they wouldn't listen to what I had to say and would would tell me to say something that I just said. But in this case, when it's something so completely out of the norm and so completely different, you know, something like this, in my relationship with Vince Russo, something like this, I Vince would have gotten with me if he would have planned this in, in advance. He would have gotten with me just one on one and talk to me, talk to me about what to say. But the fact that he didn't, and the fact that nobody was talking to me, I, I it even made me more confused. So, well, the only thing we did was just kind of like shake our head and smile and kind of. You know, do a little nervous laugh about it because we had no idea what we were we were doing here. And there was one thing that that Vince Russo said that I understood that 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 really hit home with me clearly, and that that he talked about, and it was at the first part of this. Now he does the mic drop and walks out, uh, and that is that he is tired of the politics in the backstage area, and we, I knew there was a lot of that going on. And, and, and that really resonated with me. But you used to see now, here we are. Here's, see, we don't know. We have no idea what to say. So we smile, right? <laughs> Look at you. You're pissed. Yeah, I am. I, I like, I, so I, yeah, okay. You know, uh, people are shitting on my work anyway. So what the fuck am I going to say here? I, you know what I should have done? I should have done what Tony Schiavone does in 2018. I should have motherfucked him. I should have said, you know what, fans, I hate to say this, but we've heard the word shit so many times. I'll just say it as I see it. Those motherfuckers didn't tell me what to say in my ear just now. Okay? So what I'd like to say is, oh, my God, fuck everybody in the back. That would have probably been memorable, too, don't you think? You're crushing it. They're laughing. You are on fire right here. <laughs> oh, well, it's a, it's a moment I won't forget. We got Goldberg. Yeah, we got Goldberg. We still got two matches here. One's going to be a pretty good one. Goldberg turning heel. What did you guys? What did you think about that, Conrad? When they turn him heel, bad move, good move, what? Well, I didn't know what else you could do with him. You know, I mean, that's exactly what Russo said. What else could we do with him? You know, I mean, listen. A lot of people would say, "Oh, you should have never beat him." Well, that's fucking stupid. Eventually, he's got to lose. Like. Sure I'm he does. Think. I mean, if if he just if he just beats everybody, I mean, uh, yeah, okay, it works for a year or two or three, but fuck, he never loses to anybody ever. Like, eventually, people quit watching. Like, I really do believe that you know, he's got to lose eventually, and you know, it had to happen. And I, I don't know that I would have done it the way they did it and when they did it. I certainly would have changed the time, but I think by this point. You know, you've got, a, you can't, Goldberg's not as hot as he was before. So the idea is what if we make him a badass? And you got to remember this is happening when they're way, 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 like woefully behind. So let's, let's flip the script. Let's let Kevin Nash be the good guy and let's let Goldberg be the bad guy. I think it makes sense, you know, to try. Yeah. I'm not saying that I would have, you know, if I was writing, it might not have gotten to this point at this time, but I'm with you or Russo, I guess. What do you yeah. do with him? Yeah. And the, the flip side of that is the outsiders were never heels. There's Scott taking a piss in the corner there, I guess. <laughs> the fuck was that about? <laughs> <laughs> is that what he was doing? I think so. <laughs> My God. He's looking at Scott. Look at him. He's like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. Anyway, go back to this. I don't think the outsiders were ever heels. Catering. Uh, that we tried to portray them as heels, right? We tried to portray the NWO taking over WCW, and we were the good guys. They were the bad guys. But the people loved them too much. They were just too cool. So, to me, Scott, uh, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall were always baby faces. Wow, Greenberg is a sellout. How about that sign? Yikes. You really think these girls were plants? Oh, There's yeah. a lot of good-looking girls here, man. All right, you think they all really wanted to see I don't know. The look, look at this. 
No, that girl's with that guy. Yeah. You know, we went, I, I think I was going to say this before, we went from like, we went from like in the 80s and like the early 80s and through the, the late 80s where, and even before then, I'm sure, but where it was when you would, when you would go to your car or when the wrestlers would go to their car, there were all types of girls waiting on them, you know, but then you fast forward to this and even after that, during this era, they go to their cars and it was all, all these just guys waiting to get their autographs. So the uh, things changed a great deal in wrestling over the years. So who did you talk to first after the show was over in the back? Jimmy Hart. And was your first question just what the hell? Yep. And I said, Jimmy, do you th I remember I don't, I don't think I get the exact wording right. And I, I said, Jimmy, do you think what we saw was real? And he, he's kind of looked up in the air. He said, no, I, I don't. He said, I just from what I've heard back here, it was not. Now, maybe he was talking about the Hogan foot mm -hmm. and the Hogan. And I was talking about Vince Russo. I don't know. But I left after I talked. That's that's really the only person I talked to Jimmy Hart, because, uh, again, you know, normally. Most of the guys were gone when you got in the backstage area. Everybody took off after their match. So. What did you think of Goldberg here in 2000? Did it feel like the bloom was off the rose a little bit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think there was any. I don't think there was any doubt. I mean, I, I think it's very interesting that you and I would be uh, looking at this show a week after we looked at probably his biggest moment ever. Yeah, and now, and, you know, two years yeah. later, it's almost like it never happened. Right, right. You know, they were still into him. I mean, you still you still see the signs, people standing. There's your contract, boy. And there's your white hat still still there. I guess maybe Scott <laughs> Scott's going to read that contract. You yeah. know, he's a federal agent. Hmm. You know, I think I just realized. What? I'm pretty sure I'll know when he turns. I have that singlet that Nash is wearing. You do? Yeah, that singlet is the one he wore during the uh, finger poke of doom when he dropped the belt to Hulk Hogan in January '99. Yeah, that's another moment, right? Along with this one. Yeah, it's a wrestle crap moment, indeed. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like connect the dots moment. The fast count that wasn't in Starcade was Sting and Hogan. The finger point of doom. What happened here? Us uh, or Shimani saying that uh, Mick Foley won the title. David Arquette winning the title. Let's let's think about how many of those were your fault specifically. <laughs> All right. So Arquette, we know is your fault totally. Okay. Um, I the Mick Foley thing's my fault, right? Might, might have some fun news on that one for you. Yeah, Mick Foley is a hundred percent your fault. Yeah. Um, the screw job here. Yeah, uh, you know, I was talking to Vince Russo the other day in DM, and he said that if you and Lash Larue would have dropped a few lbs, <laughs> he had different plans here. Mm -hmm. But you fuckers couldn't put down those peach shakes from Chick Fil A that were in season this time of year. Mm -hmm. and that was all she wrote. Okay, so that's way, three. Let, let's run through this. Uh, I feel like it's worth mentioning, in case people don't already know this by now. I don't fucking like Goldberg at all. And I know that it's Cassio Kid's favorite wrestler ever. Yeah. Um, but and I love him. And I love him. I do. No, don't get me wrong. I loved Goldberg in 1998. But when I found out, you know, behind the scenes that he's trying to take everything super seriously and hurt people and, you know, beat up Evan Courageous. But, and there's no cameras or anything. Just he thought he was smarting off or disrespectful or bumped into. He's trying to like choke a coworker. And then he, you know, knocks Bret Hart's head into the fourth fucking row, one of the greatest of all time. And he just didn't love wrestling or give a shit and was just here to get a pay. He's like Sid Vicious, right? Except without the WrestleMania main events. And he's in there as a guy who we all know isn't very well trained. I'm talking about Goldberg, of course. But Kevin Nash is another guy that somebody like Jim Cornette has been very critical of. Because he would say that Kevin Nash has, you know, fucking five moves. And he's been very, very critical of Kevin. But Kevin was a top guy everywhere he went. 
you know, I mean, he was a top guy for Vince as soon as he came in. And when he comes back, he's a top guy here for you guys. Oh my God. That kick was so legit, dude. Yes, it was. So you've got two guys in here who really are not heralded as being like, oh, he's doing the up you and saying, mm-hmm. fuck you. Wow. This is a match where you got to think, you know, a choke slam from Kevin Nash. How about that? Yes. Yeah, Goldberg not, went up with him nicely too. It's not going to be a Matt classic, you know? Right. It's not. Of course it's not. So you need some reinforcements and here they come. Here comes Scott Steiner. Kevin Nash, by the way, is is he one of the the best promos in WCW at this time? Yes, he is. I agree. I think he's probably the best at the time. When because, he wanted, when he wanted to be, sometimes you know right. it came across that Kevin Nash was just too cool for school and didn't care. In my opinion, now maybe that was just his character, but my perception was sometimes ah eh, he just didn't care. And if that was the case, you know, roll tide. But I do feel like when he was motivated, he's the most charismatic dude in WCW. Meanwhile, Goldberg is trying to uh, find a way to end the career of the most charismatic person in the company. I don't know. You, you, you talk about it like he's looking to end somebody's career. I just don't think he just was just knew how to work that well. well he just he, don't he, care. And, he just don't he, care. He, well, he just didn't know how to, he just didn't, wasn't, he didn't have, know how to protect other guys. And he didn't care to learn how. Here's, here's my point. Like by the time you're main eventing against Bret Hart, you've been around long enough to know how to not throw a fucking legit kick. But this is a guy who's on the gas so much that he's fucking choking out coworkers before the show starts. Listen, we can say that, oh, he just didn't know how to work. Explain choking Evan courageous. No, oh, you're, I, you're I think I paid him $5 to do that. Well, there you go. That's fine. Then <laughs> I'm just saying Goldberg's a fuck. How about that? You know who will not be at Starcast? Goldberg. Mm, okay. Cause I don't want him fucking hurting fans. You know, I don't know. If <laughs> He's not going to hurt that. Fans. He's going to kick their head in the fucking fourth <laughs> row. And what if Evan courageous shows up and he just starts choking him? Oh, then I'll, then I'll have videotape of that. <laughs> Speaking of people who won't be at Starcast, Scott Steiner does a run in. Mm-hmm. All ham cubes. Wow, great spear, and now yeah, great spear because it's real. He just broke seventeen of uh, of <laughs> Nash's ribs. <laughs> and he's going to jackhammer him, which is what you can do if you use Blue Chew. Use our promo code <laughs> eighty three weeks. Just pay five dollars shipping. Yeah, can't do that on Patreon. Oh yeah. Sorry about that. It's not our ad. Doesn't matter. It's a joke. Okay. So there you go. Goldberg gets your win. And I think Kevin Nash is getting out of there with only a slight concussion, 17 cracked ribs (laughs) and the contract is being ripped to shreds here. Not that any of the contracts in WCW matter. He's struggling. It's too bad. That was Evan courageous. He could have ripped it in half. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like we should mention here. This gets half a star in the observer. Not much of a match. Scott Steiner came out in the guise of being Nash's best friend, replacing Scott Hall, who apparently wasn't allowed back for this angle, despite them hyping him up like crazy for this show and turned on him at the end. I think that's four pay-per-views in a row where the most hyped match on the card had the exact same finish. Goldberg then speared and jackhammered Nash and ripped up Hall's contract. Half a star. Tell me, read to me from Dave Meltzer's stuff, shit, what he thought of the Vince Russo interview. Sure. Happy to. He says, Russo then came back out and tried to do a face interview. Nobody reacted to what he said. It was kind of embarrassing to have him do his pep talk. And the paid and papered crowd, apparently not computer savvy enough to be in on all the things that happened during the week. I had no clue what he was talking about. Russo talked about his wife and three kids and how he didn't know if he would come back. But first, I'll let you take it from here. All right, uh, Booker T, you've now been put in the main event match. And is it true that Hulk Hogan has left the building? If so, uh, maybe I'll be uh, behind him on the way out. We know that Heenan's gone. And is there any, any really chance for this business? Hulk Hogan, we coming for you. Oh, I can't say that. No, Gene, I'm just proud to be here, Gene. (laughs) 
I don't know exactly what's going on, but I know that Vince Russo believes in me and has given me a chance. And if you think I'm not going to go out here and make history tonight, oh, you got another thing coming. There ain't no way I'm laying down for that man. That man got beat by a woman about this time a month ago. Yeah, I can dig it because suckers got to know. So um, back to what Meltzer wrote. Yeah. But he did out of loyalty to all the great wrestlers in WCW as everyone in the WWF will attest. If nothing else, Russo is loyal. He came to save the career of Booker T MIA filthy animals and Jarrett and started ripping on the egomaniac Hulk Hogan. Hogan played his creative control card. He said that Hogan insisted that he win the title from Jarrett. So he gave Hogan a belt and said, you'll never see Hogan again. The basic theory seems to be eventually breaking up WCW into a Bischoff led group on one show, which would be the old millionaires club against a Russo led group on another show, the new blood, which was probably the original idea for April, but they felt swerving everyone with them being put together and giving 12 weeks of programming that made no sense was more important. I guess he then said Jarrett would wrestle Booker T for the new title because the old one was dead and buried because Hulk Hogan and, um, can kiss my ass. He did all that right off the top of his head and it made for great TV for me, but the crowd reacted like they did when Andy Kaufman faked to shoot and faked breaking character on Saturday night live all those years ago. So he says, if you're an insider, it was good stuff. But if you weren't, womp, womp, womp. Yeah, yeah. he's right. Dave Meltzer is exactly right. And most weren't insiders at this time. All right, we've come to the end of a disastrous night, and the good news is we're going to put Booker T over. So I guess there is good news out of that. I really thought I'm just going to go back and, and tell you what to raise the roof there, Casio. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think we're going to we go back, and my memory of all this was is that the what Russo did and the thing with Hogan and Jarrett, they were such, to me, downers. And then the Goldberg match was in. Eh, I thought this ended us on a high note because I thought they ended up having a pretty good match. Or maybe I was just trying to look for the more positive things. Maybe this match wasn't that good. But if I recall at that time, it was a very good match because, I guess, of what had happened up until then. I don't know. Three stars is what this one would get. They're going to go 13 minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, And they compliment you here, believe it or not. The announcers did a great job getting the belt and the match over. They worked hard, but seemed to be very nervous because the match had a lot of slow spots and things were off. They did a lot of near falls and the obligatory ref pump. They teased the belt shot finish. Jared then gave a recovering Billy Silverman the stroke, which made no sense. But T hit the urinagi when Mark Johnson ran in fully clothed. And I might add counted the pin. Mm. So here you might notice too, that Jeff Jarrett is sporting the real big gold belt. It's not all gold. It's gold and silver. Uh, and the tone is definitely different from the first one. So if you're paying attention to the belts, like nerds like me and Dave Milliken were, then you realized, Hey, wait a minute. That other belt was a fake. And all these years later, up until a couple of years ago, I guess Hulk Hogan believed he had the real original big gold belt, not the copy, but our buddy Dick Bourne wrote a book all about the big gold belt. So you can read all about it. That book's available at amazon.com. Just look for a big gold belt book. And of course, wow, so Hogan thought he had in his possession, the real one. Yeah. All these years later, cause he walked out with it and he never gave it back. So he thought he had like the WrestleMania three belt. And, uh, I think he has a couple more. I know he's got the Rocky belt from that movie. He was in with, uh, Sylvester Stallone. It was about a boxer from Philadelphia named Rocky Balboa. I don't know if you heard about that one. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So there he is. The world champion. Of course, not for much longer. Booker T, man. You know, you guys were making history again here. Of course, most people remember Ron Simmons run being the first black world champion, of course, for WCW in 1992. And here we are eight years later. And Booker T is going to be your second black world champion. And what a story he had, man, from coming in as part of a tag team and going on to work his way all the way through the ranks. Yeah. You know, another reason, another way you can tell that's the real belt. 
I know the top insane. part of it's bent over. Yeah. Well, the copies yeah. were bent too, but it does look more pronounced on that version. Right. Right. You know, it's funny to think about other guys who had a similar path to Booker T not necessarily in terms of the company, but you know, coming in as a tag team guy, having great success as a tag team and then going on as an individual star and working your way up because he did the TV title. He did the U S title and then the world title. And there's not a lot of guys who did that. You think about all the great tag teams, rock and roll express didn't have anybody who had that story. Midnight express didn't, you could make a couple of comparisons come to mind, I guess three, and maybe you've got some different ones. The rockers didn't have huge success as a tag team, but obviously Shawn Michaels did go off to be very, very successful at every level as a singles wrestler. I think the heart foundation did have more success than the rockers as a tag team. And of course, Bret Hart had the intercontinental title and the world title. And then Scott Steiner comes to mind. I think those are probably the four guys I think about when I think of tag team wrestlers who really broke out as singles guys. Does anybody else come to your mind, Tony? Well, I'm going to go back when Tony Schiavone was a wrestling fan. The, uh, I remember Ric Flair and Greg Valentine being a dominant tag team in the Mid-Atlantic area. They were the world tag team champions. And, of course, Flair broke off and became the world heavyweight champion. And, and Greg Valentine, you know, he had some great runs. He was a U.S. champion, a Mid-Atlantic champion, but not like Ric Flair was. It's hard. I don't know if that's, that's a good analogy, you know, a comparison or not, but... It's hard for me think, to imagine anybody considering Steve Austin. Yeah. The Hollywood blondes. Mm-hmm. We uh, are going to have to pay you something here. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I just remember because that's when he had hair like I do now. So, right. Boom. Yeah, I know m- most people don't realize, r- think of Ric Flair as a tag team wrestler. No, I don't. But. But, but I, I think people who grew up in the Mid-Atlantic uh, region, like I did, and like Dick Bourne did, I mean, Ric Flair and Blackjack Mulligan were a big tag team at one time. Absolutely. Ric Flair and Greg Valentine, a big tag team at one time. So. Hey, what's your favorite, I, what's your favorite tag team song? <laughs> My favorite tag team song? Yeah. I guess it would be the original Rock and Roll Express song. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I have a different favorite tag team song. And what is that? Oh, you know exactly what it is. Yeah, let's see. Here it is, man. Raising the roof. Go ahead, Cass. Cass. Cass, yeah. throw your armpits are wet. <laughs> I'm wrestling Vampiro back here. <laughs> I feel like we're going uh, to have to make this a video show so everybody can see you dance every week. What, see me dance? Yeah. Oh, man, you're wearing it out over there. Oh. That's a new level Patron right there. The, it's not the low key big hog. It's another level. It's the off key big hog. Candy liquors. Better dancer in real life, you or Lois, Tony? Yeah. Oh, it's Lois. No, not it's me. Not. No, it's not. I've seen you dance. Who's the, be- who's the better dancer in real life, you or me, as they just ask? It's me. It's you. It's not me. 
quit. And I don't want to dance. Okay. Uh, well, you know what? Uh, after uh, after Scott Steiner and uh, Mike Alsom go in the back, that made that uh, run in the back between those two lose a little bit of his luster. What's your favorite WCW theme while we're watching this? Uh, Whoa, G? man. Look at this. I have jeans on. Tony. Oh, look at those jeans too. Tony. The acid I haven't, I haven't worn blue wash. jeans. I haven't worn blue jeans since, uh, well, since probably then. You look like Dick Warren right You're now. You're not even cool saying blue jeans. What's that? You s- oh. No. You should be putting the hat on right now. Yep. Uh, I'm pretty is sure Jeff. Is catering back? Pretty sure Jeff is used to uh, doing this on the WWF tables where they collapse right away. Instead of... <laughs> chugging beer he chugged Dasani and the cameraman puts his hand <laughs> over the lens so there won't be water on the lens let's hear it for the cameraman that he knew knew what he was doing man he, great that, job that guy has shot some gonzo before he didn't want to <laughs> squirt on the lens Tony doesn't know what gonzo is what's your favorite um <laughs> it's a character on sesame street I think. it is yeah i know great gonzo is i also know uh, <laughs> I was like a Sotheria sheet over here. So, hey, uh, your favorite WCW theme, Tony? We're just gonna, they're gonna work sleeper holes for about 10 more minutes. Oh, god. Uh, my favorite WCW theme? I'll play one of mine. Yeah, yes. <laughs> That's the Shivani drip song, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is probably the best one. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So what is the best one if I'm wrong? My decision, my opinion is wrong. Is that what we're saying here? Like yeah, because, I mean, everybody knows that the best song is Dustin Rhodes. Sing along, Casio. They call him the natural. Who knows the words to this? Mm-hmm. They call him the natural. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you didn't like that one? No. <laughs> you should have no. just said, Tony, can you name a WCW? <laughs> <laughs> no, not your favorite. Just name one. Just name one. Hey, hey, American males, American males, American males. That's a good one. Have you realized that during this episode, that if you realize that that WHW would be out of the ass, be out of the ass, and working for music. I mean, every time that Conrad bored his shit with me, he just sticks on another song. Here we go, though. Get ready. Are you ready? It's American Males. Tony loves Grace on the Roof. Is what I'm about to say. This is Oh, God. That's a Jimmy Hart special right there, buddy. If me and Conrad were the American whales, would he be buff? No, we would be the American whales. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. It's been a while since we did this one. Let's dust it off, Tony. Whoa. Oh. It's time for the young dragons to kick. Fight. 
as of commissioner. I want to apologize to everybody who has been with us on Patreon. <laughs> this is supposed to be WHW, not Jukebox Saturday Night. I feel like I'm in Aladdin's castle in the mall. Johnny Cage. <laughs> Booker T. That was awesome. Hey, let's just call this like it was Johnny a Mortal Kombat Cage. match. Here okay. We go. Scorpion. Off he goes. Scorpion. Oh, scissor leg kick. Oh, break dance up. Oh, raise the roof. Oh, grab redneck by head. <laughs> Shoot him in the ropes. Pick him up. Sidewalk, motherfucker. Just slam. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, false fucking finish. Okay. New bonus show is you do the entire, you do the entire show in the Mortal Kombat voice. Oh, miss, miss the Harlem sidekick. Nuts. Hooked up on rope. <laughs> Down he goes. Well, we hope Redneck doesn't go over. Because his daddy has, you know. Hi! 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 I don't know what I gotta do. Oh, no! Oh, a fucking ref bump. My God. Uh. <laughs> he's got the belt, Cassio. He's got the belt. He's hit it. Oh, uh, he, he, he ducked. Oh, he got belt. Hit him in the fucking head. No juice. No juice. Turner want no juice. On your plate. One, two, three. Two. Oh. False finish, man. Come on. Even Charles Robinson with a flashlight could have saw that was three. <laughs> Absolutely. I guess he only had one guitar because he's going for a chair and not a guitar here. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. We've seen this attempt at a spot earlier tonight. I can't wedge it in there, motherfucker. Oh, there you go. Here we go. Comes the finish. No. Covering. One. Two, no. God, there are more false finishes than on a roll here. Come blow. <laughs> Who was it? Was Johnny Cage? Johnny Cage. Who was the other one? Sub Zero. Sub Zero. Thank you. I, I was going to say Glacier. I knew that wasn't right. Glacier. <laughs> <laughs> Rath, Mortis, Rath Mortis, Vandenberg, James Vandenberg. <laughs> uh, hmm. Things are chaos in the in the ring right now. Oh, here we go. There we go. He's got another. He's got another gimmick guitar. You ever get hit with one of those? No, I never did. I'd love to take a a, a gimmick guitar shot. Really? Well, let's see if we can arrange that at uh, Starcast. Okay, let's do it for charity. Okay, go boom. There it is. That's it. Somebody fucking count. What? Oh, the ball hit a ref. We've got a champion, Conrad. We got a champion. You know, listen, it is sort of shitty that Booker T, one of the great champions, one of the all time greats, like his first title win is really marred with all this controversy because nobody talks about this. You know, when people talk about WrestleMania 14, they talk about when Austin won the belt. You know, when people talk about Starcade 97, they talk about when Sting won the belt. When people talk about Bash at the Beach 2000, this is not what they talk about. That's exactly right. And that is that is wrong. Absolutely. Because the fans really were into this, right? You could see it. it. You know, I, and so in a weird way, you know, it's, it's a double-edged sword because Russo gets a lot of credit from Booker T., for allowing him to be the world champion here and making it possible. But at the same time, Russo's booking, while it did make him the champion, it also made it to where his win was overshadowed. Well, yeah, it did. But it also, it also put him, it elevated him to the point to where now it's up to him to be able to do something with it. And 
you're never going to get you're never going to get that elevation until someone says it's your turn. And and maybe it was all the wrong circumstances, but at least it did happen for him. What's Slick Johnson up to these days? I don't know. You know, and and Booker T's uh, emotion there that you see in his face, I think's legit. I think it's real. Yeah, I mean, it's a big deal. I mean, he's been yeah. wrestling a long time, and and he finally had an opportunity to do something here. I guess we should mention that um, Slick Johnson did wind up having a run in TNA. I know you wouldn't know that, but no, I wouldn't know. Yeah, you know, he was there for a long time. Uh, he wound up uh, leaving in 2010. I'm not sure what he's up to these days, but I'm sure somebody listening knows what's going on with Slick Johnson. I know whenever um, it's Judy's birthday, she finds a Slick Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yikes so i think that's gonna just about do it for this week's episode of what happened when and i guess we should tell everybody that we're going to be bringing you a bonus episode and a regular episode next week so if you're listening to this on patron then be sure to tune in next week where we're going to give you another regular episode but a bonus episode as well uh, so stay tuned for that bonus content we're going in order for our loki big hogs we added some more Loki big hogs this past month, and we're going to get to all of you guys as quick as we can and let you guys come on the show, pick some content, have a little fun. But we're also leaving you guys in control of picking the shows. So if you haven't already, go check out Patron, and we're going to have a poll for you this week to hear what you want to hear next week. I, I do want to say at some point this month, Tony, I want to cover Great American Bash 1990. And I know that we did so much Jim Crockett promotions. There's probably a handful of folks who just do not want to hear that. And I get it, but it being stings crowning moment after it was delayed after that knee injury and he comes back right. and he's got the red and the white and the blue. And you know, there's a lot of debate about is flair staying is flair going, he signs a new contract. He's going to be sticking around. It feels like a big moment for WCW for us to talk about. If we get a chance to cover that one. I want to hear your thoughts on how important that show was to WCW. Okay. I agree. Let's do it. So first, I guess we should tell everybody that, uh, if your clock, what says what my clock does, it's about that time. It's about that time in our main event coming up tonight at Bash of the beach. 2000 and one B is Cassio kid and Lash LaRue against the American males. Holy shit, what a main event. And we're going to put it in a graveyard. It's a graveyard tag team match. And it's going to be out back in the graveyard in Huntsville, Alabama. And wait a minute. It's the fat ass gimmick coming in. It is Conrad Thompson. He's the winner because he hit him in these nuts. <laughs> See you next week on What Happened When Monday on Patron. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. If you want more of Brother Conrad and Brother Tony Schiavone, then go over to Patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. Complete with behind the scenes video and new content every week. And by well, you know, lowestrules.com. Still one of the hottest sites on pro wrestling tees.com to get your t shirts from what happened when. And also named after that crazy lady, Sister Lois. And by boxagimmicks.com. Cause, well, you know. With coffee mugs, baby onesies, the beach towels, koozies, and a whole lot more. To shamelessly show your support of what happened when. Something to wrestle with, cause, well, you know. In 83 weeks. And by Slap Dick Theater with your host, Calendar Zadumas, coming to Patreon in July. Cause we love you.